four-point lead on Stanford, the Cardinal. They've won 13 of their last 14 dating back to last year, but they're struggling on the road tonight. Coming up on Sports Channel, USF at St. Mary's Cal is at Oregon State this Saturday in a 1 o'clock affair, and UNLV at Pacific on the 16th. The 17th and 18th, Santa Clara USF, Santa Clara and St. Mary's, two great Bay Area rivalries, all on Sports Channel. Steve, Mike Montgomery had to make a decision. He chose to put Marcus Lally back in the game with eight minutes left and four fouls. Obviously having trouble getting his offense set. Scott Haskins doing what he's done so well tonight. Shoot that turnaround jump shot off the glass. He's got 16. Lally finds Garrett. Well, he's doing what he needs to do. He's finding the right people. They just can't finish. Well, with Lally in the game, if they get the ball to him in the middle of the zone pressure defense, he will try to attack from the middle. He did the right thing. Garrett just couldn't finish that one. It was a five-point Stanford lead at halftime, and then Oregon State has been on a marvelous run the last 12-plus minutes. Fellow with the ball, Kanan Chapman. What a great job defensively he's done on Adam Key, who's covering him now. The pull-up. Nope. And it's out of bounds to Stanford. You know, Keith had 15 at halftime. He has 19 in the game. And Chapman has done such a terrific job, plus the defense that has been designed by Jim Anderson to really sag in on Keith when Stanford has not been able to hit with any consistency from three-point range. Here's Keith. Two points, a chance of three. And how, when was the last time you saw him get the ball in a low post? He missed the turnaround jump shot from the corner, but he missed the layup I got on him for, but he hadn't had a shot prior to that. Nice. Why you need Marcus Lolly back in the game is for this reason right here. Oregon State goes man-to-man -man defensively. Lolly identifies it right away, knows that, that Adam's got a smaller play on it, makes a nice angle pass, and down there, Keith's going to score. And Adam Keith, an 88% foul shooter, goes to the free throw line, and Mike Montgomery was telling us before the ball game, you know, you talk about wing down to the low post, but getting the ball from the wing to the low post where the offensive player is comfortable, accepting the ball in a good rhythm to shoot is key, and Lolly does that. Well, the great point guards can get the ball to the right players at the right time, also in a, in a place where they're comfortable in terms of where they're moving. They deliver it right. That's what Magic Johnson did so well. He's whether on the break or half court, delivered the ball in, in a way that the player could do something with it when he received it. And Barry is fouled by Peter Duke. Got a penalty situation now for Oregon State. As you pointed out earlier, Steve, the Beavers have really only four fouls now this half, so Stanford's a long way from shooting on common fouls. Yeah, next foul, and Oregon State shoots two every time. This is still one plus the penalty, but Barry, who has struggled, even though he shoots underhanded, he misses. And it went right off the top of Kane and Chapman's head, and into the hands of a Stanford Cardinal. Dukes goes low Garrett. Shovels oh, for Williams, and now they've got it going. Garrett had a left-hand shovel pass to Keith a little while ago. Does it with a right hand to a cutting Williams. Excellent movement by Williams. Excellent recognition by Garrett. 57-56. 608 to go. McKinney, Chapman, Barry, Aston, and Jackson. Good ball handlers in for Oregon State. Stanford in the man-to-man -man defense all night long. Oregon State changed defense every possession by Stanford. Barry lobs low Haskin, but Keith right there with the defense. Once again, no room for error on that pass, and uh, Oregon State needs to be more patient this phase of the game. Go low Garrett again, and this time he struggles with the ball, and Haskin strips him. Barry's taking it. Oh, what a pass! Haskin couldn't finish. And here comes Stanford. Lolly taking it, and Barry with the foul. Oh, how about that no look? Well, it was a good foul. I think Marcus Lolly would have gone for the layup, but I, we're going to get another look at this pass. Look at this over the shoulder. I don't know how he saw him. Right hand, right on target. That shot was actually blocked by Garrett. And you know, this game going back to the Bay Area, and there's a lot of folks who are familiar with Brent Berry because he played his high school basketball at De La Salle in Concord. A terrific player there. And lives in the Danville area. Well, he's got a lot of confidence with five minutes left of the ball game, his team up just a point to throw that kind of pass, and it was a beautiful one. 
57-56, Oregon State has the lead, but Stanford has the basketball with 5.20 to play. Jackson on Dukes. I'm sorry, on Williams. Drop back in the zone with Haskins and Anderson and Jackson on that front line. There's the lob to Williams! Beautiful execution. Williams just sneaks behind his own defense. Everyone's so aware of where Adam Keefe is. He came up the high post. Williams went low and a perfect pass by Marcus Lawley. And the zone was flat-footed. The man, you have to set a pick, but this time they didn't even need to do that. No, just Oregon State defenders guard the zone. Had no awareness of Williams who stuck behind it. So Stanford has a one-point lead. Four and a half minutes to go. Barry, an off-balance shot. Tough shot, obviously not afraid to take it as a freshman. But Oregon State really has had trouble getting a good shot the, the, the last four or five trips down the floor. Two-three zone defense has dropped back in it. And the steal by Charles McKinney. He'll take it in, and Oregon State reclaims the lead at 59-58. Huge play by McKinney. A passive 2-3 zone defense. He gets in the passing lane. And, and just an unforced turnover by the Cardinal. Jim Morgan back in. And Barry knocks it out of bounds. Boy, McKinney has had a strong game. Five of six from the floor. Six of six from the line. 17 points. And his steal has given Oregon State the lead. And Dan Barry... He's feeling the pressure. It's 1941, and baseball legends Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio are setting records, records that still stand today. Now to commemorate the 50th anniversary of these outstanding sports achievements, Romart proudly presents The Streak and The 406. From the studio of internationally renowned artist Armin LaMontagne, a limited edition each of 1,941 lithographs, individually signed and numbered by Mr. LaMontagne, are now being made available to you. Collectibles that you'll be proud to own and display. Collectibles that we are so sure will increase in value that we'll buy back your lithograph at any time for the original price. To own your piece of sports history, here's how to order. Call 1-800-967-6636. $125 each or $200 for the set. Call now. Oregon State with a 59-58 lead. Three minutes and 41 seconds to play in this game. Jim Anderson talking with his defense, and in particular, Mario Jackson. He's one of the guys who has to float down on the side that Adam Keith has been posting up so many times tonight. Well, you look at the lineup for the Beavers on the floor, they're really very small other than Scott Haskin in there. We pointed out he's playing with foul trouble, so he can't be very, very aggressive. So if Stanford can get the ball inside, Adam Keefe should have a, a, a field day. Defense has improved the second half. Oregon State dropping back in the 2-3 zone, have it packed fairly tightly. They're going to take their chances that Peter Dukes or someone can hit a jump shot. And Jackson's fronting Keefe. On that weak side, this is Williams. He forced it up there. Keith never touched the ball again. 3.18 to go. And there is still plenty of time on the clock. Haskin was open, but Keith's defending him. Three minutes to play. Oregon State by one. Haskin gets it low, takes it up, and he's stripped and fouled by Peter Duke. Well, Oregon State, the interview pass to Scott Haskins has taken chances time and again. You see this pass right here. Again, there are players right around him. Keith has pretty good position. Dukes comes over to help a little too late. He does get Haskins on the arm. Scott Haskins who has 16 points in the night. Adam Keith gets his cardinal together. Haskins, an 80% foul shooter.
in terms of a pure pivot man in the Pac-10 conference, that's a lot of P's, I know. <laughs> Scott Haskins is developing into the one, of, one of the best. I mean, you talk Keith, John McClain, John Rook. That's three good ones right there. And then Haskins joining the elite. It's a three-point Oregon State lead with two minutes and 42 seconds to play. Brent Williams out to Marcus Lolly. Down low. Keith tried to go at the left hand and got fouled. You know, he had the right side. Was he going left to try and uh, tie the game with a three-point play? No, I think he just had his momentum. He made such a quick move of the basket. I think his momentum carried him underneath, and he had to go to, to the baseline. See right there, he makes a very quick move. You're right, Steve. He would have, if he could have gone straight up, he would have had the right side, which was more open than that left-hand layup. He looked to be leaning so far that he had to take it underneath. Nice entry pass by Peter Dukes. Very quick move, very quick turn by the big man. He shoots 88% from the line. He makes the first one, and the Pac-10 has some terrific foul shooters. Of course, at UCLA, both Tracy Murray and Don McClain over 90%. He makes them both. They've got a one-point game at the two-and-a-half-minute mark. Well, Oregon State really has had trouble getting a good shot out of their half-court set. This is a period of time. They've got to be patient, but they've got to get some movement. They can't just stand around and look at Scott Haskins because Stanford runs three guys at him. Chapman. Lolly will take McKinney. He must have some good screens and cuts. They got Askin open momentarily, and then it's knocked away by Keith and picked up by Williams. No reason for that pass. Two defenders on him, one coming from the backside. Lolly struggles, and a foul is called. And Chapman furious, and Willis McDuncan staring at Kane and Chapman, saying, you are close to a technical. Marcus going to the middle here, losing control of the ball a little bit. Not much contact there. Chapman gets a long look from Willis McJunkin after the demonstration on the foul. And Chapman with three fouls sends a strong foul shooter to the line. Marcus Lolly 79% this year. The problem with that reach play is you almost always get called. Even when you get all ball, if you're reaching in, it's, it, it's nearly an automatic by almost every official in the land. Well, he's taking care of his his outfit. <laughs> He's trying to collect himself a little bit there, just stepping away until he was ready. He ties the game at 61. Two minutes to go. Stanford and Oregon State in the Pac-10 opener. This man's a cool customer. He doesn't get rattled very easily. Well, he misses number two, and Oregon State has it. Inside, two minutes to go. Great way to debut in the Pac-10. Stanford and Oregon State. Tied at 61. Two clubs really trying to find out how good they are, and this game will give them a, a, a large, large clue. Haskin makes the basket, is foul, and has a chance for three. Great catch by Scott Haskin. Mario Jackson snuck a pass through there. Some of the ones that have not made it through to Haskin. You see him off. The turnaround move hangs in the air. And Haskin, nice catch and nice conversion. Mario hangs so he gets the angle. That's a tough play. That's an athletic pass. And Garrett picks up his fourth foul. Haskin gives Oregon State a three-point lead, 64-61, a minute 35 to go. Well, aggressive zone defense here after the pressure. Jimmy Anderson choosing to show pressure, then drop back in the zone. Stanford is probably going to have to look at a jump shot and maybe a three by that man. Well, they're sagging on Keith big time. They've got two defenders on him wherever he goes. He gets the ball anyway. He powers up. He fades. Oh, he scores! That is a tough shot. Contact. Moving away from the basket. Marcus Lolly trying to get a timeout call. Could not. Went over to Tom Harrington to say next time they score, they'll call timeout. And he steals the ball! Once again, that pass is not there. McKinney tries to force on the first side with a one-point lead. He does not need to make that pass. 
Mike Montgomery wants a timeout. He wants to talk about this. 34 seconds in the shot clock, 46 in the game clock. Jim Herrick, when he saw him last year, and he ate up UCLA inside, he said he's the best low post offensive player. But he's also an All-American because he makes All-American plays. And that defensive play was why Adam Keith is going to be uh, a first-team All-American this year. To make a lot of money, I think, uh, <laughs> after this year as well. You know, he made that tough decision in the offseason when a lot of people in the NBA said he might be a lottery pick. And he said, no, I, I don't think I've grown up yet. I'm still Peter Pan. And right. he came back to the farm, and uh, he has really up his stock a lot. He said an interesting thing. He said, you know, I can't replace my senior year in college. Uh, uh, if I'm not injured, I'm going to have a pro career, and certainly he will. But he said he's never going to have a chance to be a senior at Stanford again. I and mean, you have to admire the decision. Well, Stanford has two timeouts. Left o Oregon State still has two. And the next hell ball situation will be the Cardinals. But they have the basketball. And again, an eight-second difference. I'm sorry, a 12-second difference on the game clock and the shot clock. And you can see it up in the top of the screen. 46 seconds left. 34 on the shot clock. Why the strategy here by Mike Montgomery? Well, he's going to try to run most of the clock, uh, I, I believe, and, and try to get his, the ball to keep with eight, ten seconds left on the shot clock to, to win this ball game or get a foul uh, if he doesn't get the field goal to go. Now, Oregon State, I think, has a tougher decision. They know they're going to try to get the ball to keep. They have to decide what kind of defense to play. They don't want to be too passive and sit back in his zone and, and get beaten by an open shot. But he can kill you man to man. All right, here we go. 44 seconds left. Jimmy Anderson decided to stay in his own defense and collapse around Keith, let somebody else beat him. Marcus Lowe is going to be open. Dukes hits oh. the three-pointer. What a clutch jumper by Peter Dukes. Struggled with his shooting tonight in three-point land. It hit it when he needed it most. Can you believe it? One of the things Jim Anderson said to me today, he said, I think Adam Keith is a better low-post player because they've switched Peter Dukes to his side. And Dukes, he's responded by hitting the three-pointers. And right there, same side as Adam Keith. Keith is double teamed, leaving Dukes open from the perimeter. Mike Montgomery hasn't won all these games at Stanford by being a dummy. He's a smart, he's a great coach. He knows he's going to put his low post threat on the same side with his best shooter, make it very difficult to defend. He gets some inside outside flow. As soon as you get a collapse, you're going to get Peter Duke hitting the shot. And uh, we saw a perfect execution of it right there. And there's Jim Anderson. He's got 25 seconds to work with. His club is down by 266 64. Well, he's got to try to figure out what his advantage is offensively now. Clearly, it's Haskin inside, but the problem he has is he doesn't have guys that can make that good entry pass or know, know when to make the pass and get the ball to Haskin. So he's got to decide if he's going to try to break the defense down from outside. Right here, you're going to see Dukes just you see the three white shirts, four white shirts around Keith as his own defense swings to his side, leaving Dukes just that little bit of daylight to hit the clutch, clutch jumper. He's got two in the game. I'm sorry, three three-pointers in the game, and Peter Dukes now with 11 points, but he must play the strong defense. As Oregon State's down by 225 seconds to go. What a way to start the Pac-10. Oregon has beaten Cal 67-57. Cal will be here on Saturday on Sports Channel. Ernest Killen back in the game. It's a ball great one-on-one -on -one player. Oregon State's got to break the defense down. Ten seconds to go. Here goes Barry. He throws it low to Haskins. It's knocked away. And Keith trying to run it out and try and get the foul. He does with two seconds left. And they will run out of Gill Coliseum now as Stanford closing in on win number nine this year. We can see the celebration by the Stanford players. Right before that, Mike Montgomery went down the bench, stopped his foot. And he is a, a man of glee. He's trying to get a timeout right now to talk about this thing, know what to do after Adam Keith shoots his free throw. You know, Keith grabs the ball. He's not going to give it to anybody. He goes, hey, I'm the 88% free throw shooter. I'm taking it. Brent Barry tried the drive and then dropped it low. And Haskin, it looked like, should have caught the basketball. Scott Haskin's done a great job all night of catching catchable passes and converting them. But I agree with you. That was a pass he, he could have caught and, and gotten a shot attempt at the hoop. Both Barry and Haskin have the tremendous reach, and here it is again, Wally. Right here, Brent Weaver's way through traffic. Boy, that's a tough pass. That was right on the money. 
It looked like as Haskin tried to bring it down, Marcus Lally got a piece of that ball. Of course, big man Kevin McHale epitomizes this, or, or told never bring the ball down, but sometimes you have to to try to gather yourself and get the shot up. 66-64, two seconds left, and Stanford's free throw artist, Adam Keefe, will be at the free throw line. And I'm not sure if Keefe has missed tonight from the foul line. Six for six. And if he makes them both, they'll let them just bring the ball up and do whatever they want. That's exactly right. Just, just leave the they, floor on. They will be on, in the locker room if he makes them both. <laughs> Here we go, Montgomery. His ball club was down by three and came back on Keefe's three-point play inside. Peter Dukes gave him the lead with a three-point play when they're down by one. And now Keefe has a chance to seal it. Well, here's where the penalty situation comes into play, Steve. Beavers committed just eight fouls, so Keith has a one and one. Obviously, the, the, the pressure shot is the first one, or Oregon State could get the ball back and have a chance to advance it for what would be a desperation shot, but nonetheless, they would have a prayer. Both teams have been superb from the foul line tonight. And this man has been right on target. And there it is, a three-point lead. He has 27 points. This man, as you point out, maybe first team All-American, maybe the best player in the conference. Well, he misses. Haskin at the buzzer. It will be well short. And Stanford escapes Gill Coliseum with a three-point win, 67-64. Adam Keep talking to the young player Kanan Chapman. And Jim Anderson gives his congratulations to Mike Montgomery. Great legs. Thank you. How do you get them? I used to do aerobics till I dropped. Then I found Thigh Master. Every single time you squeeze Thigh Master, you strengthen and tone right where you need it. So it's easy to squeeze, squeeze your way to shapely hips and thighs. I thought I'd never fit into these jeans again. Thank you, Thigh Master. I recommend it and use it. The secret to shapely thighs is exercising these muscles with just the right resistance. This balance resistance coil is designed to give you results quickly and comfortably. Want to tone your upper chest and arms? Thigh Master will give you excellent results. Thigh Master, we may not have been born with great legs, but now we can look like we were. To order your Thigh Master, call 1-800-841-0300. Have your credit card ready or send check money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 for shipping and handling to this address. No CODs, please. If you're not fully satisfied, return it in 30 days for your money back. Plus, if you call right now, we'll also send you Suzanne Slender for Life Plan absolutely free. So call now for quick delivery. The Grundig Traveler 2 is designed for a person who's always on the go. With Grundig World Band Radios, you don't have to be surprised by events such as the opening of the Berlin Wall, Desert Storm, or the changing face of the Soviet Union. The Grundig Traveler 2 incorporates full-size features, including multifunction digital alarm clock, 7-band AM-FM shortwave radio with a multifunction LCD display, world time selection switch, and earphones. The Grundig Traveler 2. Call 1-800-841-0300 with a major credit card. Or send check or money order to Grundig Traveler 2, P.O. Box 4670, Omaha, Nebraska 68104. Grundig, your ear to the world. They're the wisest guys in the business, and you'll find them here every week. The Sports Writers on TV. See it exclusively on Sports Channel America. Tonight's game has been brought to you by your local cable company. Cable makes your TV come alive. Steve Fiziak and Wally Walker back at Gill Coliseum where Stanford has escaped with a three-point win, 67-64. What a great way to start the Pac-10 season. A sensational first game, a huge win for Stanford. As you pointed out, Mike Montgomery thought the loss here and at Oregon last year really kept him out of the NCAA. It's a big win. They have a shot at beating a down Oregon club on Saturday, and then they come home for Cal next Wednesday. You know, Adam Keeve, we talked about so much tonight, but Marcus Lolly, great job as the point guard, and Oregon State had to do this performance without Chad Scott, one of their top players. But they fall tonight, 67-64. And be sure to tune in to Sports Channel this Saturday, as January 11th, we'll see at 1 o'clock, 
Oregon State hosting the California Golden Bears here at Gill Coliseum. For Wally Walker, I'm Steve Fizziak from Gill Coliseum. Stanford beats Oregon State 67-64. Good night, everyone. to see the 76ers battle the Utah Jazz, the Phoenix Suns, the Denver Nuggets, the Seattle Supersonics, the Golden State Warriors, the Portland Trailblazers, the Dallas Mavericks, the Houston Rockets, and the Los Angeles Lakers, you need Prism. No other channel on TV has these games. They're only on Prism. So if you thought you had all the sports you need, but you don't have Prism, you'd better think again. Call your cable company and order Prism, because if you don't have Prism, you're missing the best games of the year. More Flyers. More Sixers. More Flyers games than any channel on TV. More Sixers games than any channel on TV. No one brings you more Flyers. More Sixers than Prism. Now more than ever, when you want more, when you demand the most, you need Prism. Call your cable company and get more out of cable TV. Order Prism today. key to big Notre Dame win at Southern Cal this past Monday night. It was a solid team effort as the Irish downed the Trojans 64-58 in Los Angeles to give John McLeod his second win as Notre Dame's head coach. Damon Sweet continued his strong play at the two guard and leads the Irish in scoring, but it was Ellis with 21 points and 15 rebounds who led the way Monday. Tonight, Notre Dame's odyssey continues as they tangle with LaSalle in Philadelphia. Creative Communications presents Notre Dame Basketball. Tonight, from the Civic Center in Philadelphia, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on the LaSalle Explorers. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred White. Welcome live to the Civic Center. Analyst Jim Gibbons has been fighting the flu. Yesterday had no voice. Tonight he's got some. Jim, good to see you again. Well, Glad you're feeling better. 24 hours, 24 hours ago, I didn't think I'd be with you, Fred. Thanks. You're feeling better, and so is Coach John McLeod after the Irish victory at Southern Cal on Monday night. It was a good win for Notre Dame as we're in the middle of this long road trip, this nine-game road trip. And before the game tonight, we talked to John McLeod about what that win would mean to his team. It was a tremendous win for us from the standpoint that uh, it was a confidence booster. We had been struggling. We did play better against Kentucky, and then we came back against Southern Cal and played well. But to be able to have success on uh, on the opponent's floor against a club, a club like Southern Cal certainly is a boost to us uh, and should help us in games down the road. Well, the Irish have only played seven games so far this season, Fred. But I think when they look back at season end, they're going to realize that that was the game that maybe the coaches and the players saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I also think that the players realize now that if they execute, they're going to be able to run John McLeod's system, both offensively and defensively. That's a win, as he mentioned, they hope to build on here tonight. We mentioned the Fonzo Wallace game. 21 points, 15 rebounds, the kind of game you like to have out of the big man. Well, we've talked four years now about the Fonz, whether or not he was going to be an impact player. I really honestly believe he's gotten the message, Fred, but for him to be that impact player offensively, he's got to have production from Sweet and Bennett offensively. That's the Notre Dame side of the ledger. Now, before the ball game tonight, we talked to the coach of LaSalle, Speedy Morris, about his basketball team. Speedy, of course, wants to see his ball club with a win here tonight. We asked him if he wanted to see an up-tempo game out of his team. We like to play that way, but we can play both styles. Uh, you know, we, we just hope to outscore the team that we play. 
Uh, if the break's there, we hope to be able to, uh, to utilize it, but we'll run in offense, and we just have some very good shooters. When a ball's going in the basket, uh, we play very well. We've The last three games, we've made over 43s, and if we can uh, maintain that, then we're going to be a good team. Fred, you aren't going to believe this, but if you want to talk about prolific three-point shooters, LaSalle has taken 225 three-point shots, and Hurd and Woods have taken 147 of those. So I would suspect you don't have to be a road scholar to know that the number one key for Notre Dame is going to be defensive transition out above that three-point line. And find number 14 in a hurry. That's Randy Woods. <laughs> he's averaging 28 points, seven rebounds, and five assists to ballgame. Well, he's a guy that's never seen a shot he didn't like. So I want to tell you, Notre Dame is going to have to shut him down. But as always, he can't do it without help and he gets plenty of help. Well, he does. They're a senior-dominated team. Interesting thing about the matchup, Fred. Four seniors starting for LaSalle, four seniors starting for Notre Dame. And Jim, this should be an entertaining basketball game here tonight. I think it's going to be an up-and-down basketball game. I think you can flip a coin. For Notre Dame, again, in the middle of this nine-game road trip, this one could be a big step forward for him here tonight. It's a storied old building here in Philadelphia, the Civic Center. It's seen a lot of basketball in this day and is going to see more tonight as the Irish take on LaSalle. We'll be back to meet starting lineups right after you watch this. This Notre Dame basketball game is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who remind you, friends know when to say when. Now you can watch Notre Dame football year-round. Catch all the excitement of the 1991 season when you order the Fighting Irish highlight video. It's only $19.99 plus $5 shipping and handling. Send check or money order to 1991 Irish Highlights, 401 East Colfax Street, Suite 207A, South Bend, Indiana, 46617, or charge by phone with Visa or MasterCard, 1-800-488-3883. Relive the excitement and emotion that is Notre Dame football. You will receive cash. Yes, cash for Rolex. Cash for Patek Philippe. Cash for Cartier. Heritage Estate Buyers will pay you cash for these men's wristwatches or the others I will list. Heritage is on a national search for watches. We will help you with cash if you own a Vacheron, Universal Geneve, Breitling, also Audemars, Movado, and Lacultra. Your watch can be worth thousands of dollars if it's a chronograph, moon phase, or repeater. This is an opportunity for you to receive cash for a watch that's gathering dust in a drawer. Heritage Estate Buyers will pay you cash for the fine men's wrist watches we listed, working or not. If you don't call now, you're losing money. Write down our number. We're ready to pay top dollars now. Time means money. Call Heritage now. Call 1-800-238-3100 to find out how to receive cash for your watch. Time means money. Call toll-free. 1-800-238-3100. Call now. The toll-free number displaying now on your screen should be used to respond to the following. This is an important message for U.S. veterans. Whether you serve during peacetime or war, call now for free information about veterans term life insurance. That's just one dollar a week. Benefits are guaranteed never to go down and are paid from day one. Only veterans, spouses, and widows ages 30 to 69 qualify for this dollar a week offer. Don't wait. Call now for free information from Veterans Life Insurance Company. The stage at the Civic Center here in Philadelphia where they hold the official ceremonies commemorate the 150th anniversary of the country. Well, there have been some great players, Rob, on this court. Tom Gola, Wilt Chamberlain, down through the years. So many good ones have played here, although they hadn't played college ball here since 1955 when they resurrected this building this year and made it LaSalle's home court. And now tonight again, Notre Dame and LaSalle are here getting set to go. We're going to find out how John McLeod and Speedy Morris are going to start them. Let's join public address announcer John McAdams. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Philadelphia Civic Center, home of the LaSalle University Explorers. This evening, LaSalle University presents the University of Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the LaSalle University Explorers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, for the Fighting Irish, at a forward position, a senior, six feet, eight inches tall, from East St. Louis, Illinois, number 20, Lafonso Ellis. At the other forward, a freshman, six feet, four inches tall, from Aurora, Illinois, number 30, Billy Taylor. At the center spot, a senior, six feet, 11 inches tall, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number five, Keith Tower. 
At the guards, the senior, six feet tall from Houston, Texas, number 12, Elmer Bennett. At the other guard, the senior, six feet, five inches tall from Beaumont, Texas, number 22, Damon Sweet. The head coach of the Fighting Irish in his first season is John McLeod. The assistant coaches, Fran McCaffrey, Jimmy Black, Jeff Nix, and Steve Hudson. And for the LaSalle University Explorers. At a forward position, the senior, six feet, eight inches tall from Bangor, Pennsylvania, number 51, Braun Holland. At the other forward is senior, six feet, six inches tall from Linnitz, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At the center spot, a senior, six feet, nine inches tall from Amsterdam, Netherlands, number 44, Milko Liebers. At the guards, a junior, six feet, four inches tall from Slidell, Louisiana, number 24, Jeff Neubauer. At the other guard is senior, six feet tall, from Philadelphia, number 14, Randy Woods. The head coach of the LaSalle University Explorers in his sixth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The assistants, Joe Mahalik, Randy Monroe, Rich Prendergast, and, and Sam Ryan, Sr. And we should report senior. to you, Speedy Morris says he's feeling well. He had some chest pains earlier this week, thoroughly checked out, says he feels good. He's here, ready to go. LaSalle's ready, so are the Fighting Irish. You've met the starting lineups, and we'll be back to tip it off right after this. Sometimes I dream that he is me. You got to see that's how I dream to be. A dream I move. A dream I grew. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. I'm going to be, I'm going to be like Mike. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Be like Mike. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Be like Mike. Get ready for the TVKO Fight of the Month for January. A spectacular boxing triple header live on pay-per-view cable TV. Knockout artist Darren Van Horn puts his IBF super middleweight crown on the line against former world middleweight champ Iran Barkley. Olympic silver medalist Roy Jones Jr. 15-0 battles Jorge Baca. Plus a third heavy duty dynamite slugfest live on pay-per-view cable TV. Call your cable operator now and order this pay-per-view triple header. Notre Dame in a two and five, LaSalle four and four. Good officiating crew here tonight. Jody Sylvester, Joe Mingle, and Gene Mangi in charge of the proceedings. Another look at the starting lineups. Ellis Taylor, Tower, Bennett, and Sweet for Notre Dame. And for LaSalle, Ron Holland up front along with Jackie Hurd, Lieberst in the middle, Newbauer, and Randy Woods. Keep an eye the, on The Fort two Dave. interesting matchups now, I think, Fred. Bennett is going to start on Woods. And Billy Taylor, the freshman, who was a very fine defensive player, is going to go on hurt. So Elmer Bennett will have the first chore of shutting down Randy Woods, again, who's averaging nearly 28 points a ball game for Speedy Morris' team. Notre Dame has dominated series, leading 16 to 4. And the tip controlled by Notre Dame. Elmer Bennett. LaSalle's going to open zone. Yeah. Jump right into that zone. Alfonso Ellis. Sweet at the top of the zone. See, this is going to slow the, ga the game down to a pace that LaSalle wants it right now. Sweet three-point range, and he nails it to start the ball game. Damon Sweet gets the Irish off to a solid start. Damon Sweet out front with Jeff Neubauer. Randy Woods comes off a double screen to pop the jump shot and gets it off the glass. They run a flex offense, Fred, but they start everything from set plays, and that's just what they did. They ran the screen for him, and he got it. You talked about Elmer Bennett having to guard him. He had to come off two screens that time. That's tough to do, and now Bennett misses the long jumper at the other end. LaSalle basketball, Neubauer trying to get it up court. And Milko Levers and is taken away by Damon Sweet for the Irish. Quiet crowd here at the Civic Center. This Irish got it off to the good start with a three-point shot. And they're going to try to neutralize LaFonso Ellis by using this zone and getting him away from inside. The Irish very patient in the early going here. Billy Taylor along the wing in front of Bennett. 
Now sweep. Mandy Woods knocks the ball loose in the battle for the loose ball in the circle picked up by Bron Holland for LaSalle. And immediately they get it to Randy Woods. And he's picked up by Bennett out top. That's why Woods is leading this club with 18 steals. He has very, very good hands. Deep on the wing, Jackie Hurd for LaSalle. There's Levers from the top of the circle, no. And Sweet hauls it down for Notre Dame. Bennett immediately back off the wing. Very patient attack by Notre Dame against that LaSalle zone. They really haven't looked crisp against it yet. Now Bennett, right in the middle, they go to Tower and a jump hook good by Keith Tower. Saw the crease and got it right inside. Fred, I've always said two things against zone. You not only need the ball movement, but you need the player movement. You just can't stand around. That's what Notre Dame did the first couple of sequences. By right, good hands. Steal, Alfonso Ellis for the dunk. Whoa. With some emphasis, I would say. And Notre Dame with a five-point lead. LaFonso Ellis off the steam. Not many people that size run the basketball floor as well as LaFonso Ellis. He was gliding at good speed that time. Notre Dame is at three out of four shots in the early going. Now they get it down in the lane to Randy Woods, and he takes the drive. Tip try, no. They battle for the rebound, and it's taken away by Omer Bennett. Up come the Irish in a hurry this time. But now they get it, and they back it out against the zone. Billy Taylor. Tower from the deep corner. Low percentage shot won't go. Gets the long rebound, and he's going to be called for a walk. Brian Holland stood right there after Tower took the shot. Never got into his body. That's what happens what they say against zones. No responsibility to box out. Tower made a good reaction to the glass, but then traveled with the basketball. But undecided whether he wanted to shoot it or pass it. Yep. Decided to pass it and couldn't quite get rid of it in time. So I, used, I used to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. The shot by Jack Hurd for three is buried off the wing, and it's 7-5 Notre Dame. Jack Hurd, a good three-point shooter. He's shooting 47% from three-point range. Better than he is from two-point count. Streaky, streaky. One of 12 against Princeton, Fred. Eight of nine against Oregon. The word is if he gets started right, oh, look out. He is streaky. And he buried his first try tonight. Now, Billy Taylor. A little strong with a try that time. A strong rebound. LaFonso Ellis, and he's going to be fouled as he tried to take it back up. And it was Randy Wood, I believe, that got him. One of the parts of his game that has really improved tremendously. Earlier in the year, Fred, Fonz won a couple of games without getting one offensive rebound, and I know you could hardly believe that with his size and his ability. John McLeod sat him down and had a big talk with that young man. This is a big year for that guy. He's got, he should have dollar signs in front of his eyes, and he is now going to that offensive glass better than he has in three years. And you know, for all that, he's going to finish his career at Notre Dame over 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds with good numbers. But the team success hasn't been there, and you always look to the guy you expect it from. You bet. And the nice thing about it is he's eligible for both semesters. He's taken a lot of reps for that. He needs only 12 hours to get his degree in May from Notre Dame. An accountant? As an accountant, absolutely. <laughs> How's that? Which is, one of the, which is one of the toughest courses in our business school. Billy Taylor committed a foul on the rebound attempt. His first and the first on Notre Dame. The team fouls are even at one. The Irish have an 8-5 lead over the South. From here, it's on to Madison Square Garden in a game against North Carolina, then to West Virginia, on to Virginia. Wow, what an odyssey. Oh, what a fadeaway jump shot from Randy Wood. That one wouldn't go. Ron Holland using his size inside to knock down the rebound shot. His first two points. Six-eight senior from Bangor, Pennsylvania. You play against LaSalle, you better be ready to go to that basket on that defensive end because, boy, Holland and Levers can really put their bodies on people. Sweet. Now LaFonso Wallace away from the basket. Taylor, nice PS pass down to the baseline. And Tower's going to kick it back outside, but he can't. He's going to be called for the charging foul, his first foul. I know what you're going to say, Fred. He passed up a wide-open shot to put the ball on the floor and give the zone a chance to surround him, and then he turns it over. So the Irish turn it over, but they have the lead, and we have the first break in the ball game. Timeout at 15-25 left in our first half. Notre Dame by a point. car born of intelligent engineering. My daughter, by invest... ...the 
seven two lead LaSalle has not been in front yet but Notre Dame not able to get away from them. Notre, Notre Dame has put themselves in a position Fred against that zone to get a couple of nice jump shots that they've passed up. You know it's doggy Julian's old saying you can't get any closer than close. <laughs> Tower couldn't have gotten any closer than that. You can't pass that shot up. If you do you've got to sit on the bench. 6 11 senior from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania. There's the early shooting three for six three for seven. And a slow paced basketball game so far in the Civic Center. See a different set, a 1 4 set, but out of that they'll go right into their flex. They'll go Levers. Nice pass down inside to Jack Hurd, and the shot is good. Hurd has five points, and it's 9 8. LaSalle with their first lead of the night. And a quick lead pass down court. LaFonso Ellis went up and got it. Finds Tower alone in the circle. He tries to get loose and can't. Elmer Bennett can, and that is a two point shot. And the Irish are back in front. 10-9 Notre Dame. There you see the clock. 14-48 left in our first half. No co-leavers from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Heard. Try to get by Billy Taylor and pops a shot. No, and Billy Taylor had a hand all over him. That did a nice job. Now Damon Sweet and a foul called on Emma Bennett as he cut in front of Jack Heard. Elmer Bennett called for his first foul, the second on Notre Dame. One thing about three-point shooter, Fred, some of them are strictly standstill shooters. But Jack Hurd had the reputation of being a standstill and off-the-dribble shooter, and that's what Billy Taylor forced him to do that time because he forced his way right through the screen. Notre Dame with four turnovers so far in this game. LaSalle just two. And a substitution for LaSalle. Now they have Latiki Colombo in the ballgame, a 6-7 freshman from Herndon, Virginia. Born and raised in Zaire. His father was the ambassador to Canada for Zaire. Lived there for a dozen years. He's a cousin to Kenby Matumbo. Lutiki Colombo in the game right now. That's Jack Hurd with another three, and he has eight points. And look out. He's got it going his way right now. 12-10 LaSalle. Ellis to Sweet. Bennett. Bird is three for five from the floor in this game. That's not good news for Notre Dame. Damon Sweet for three. Levers claims the rebound for LaSalle. Randy Woods, quick pass up court. Lumbo. And turns it over. That's that's what you call not playing your role right there, Fred. His role isn't to put the ball on the floor like that. He had to wait for the offense to get back and set it up. Notre Dame very deliberate on the attack. Billy Taylor takes it down to the baseline. Lafonso with a nice soft touch off the glass, and he has five points. Yeah, and switched hands. He would, if he had shot that right-handed, that shot would have been blocked. That's pretty good movement by Ellis. Notre Dame gets it back to a 12-12 tie with 13-14 left in the first half. Milko Lieberst. Randy Woods, a tough try from the deep corner and too strong with it. Rebounded by Sweet. Here come the Irish. Sweet moving past Hurd at midcourt. He's got the lane and dumps it off to Lafonso Ellis, and a blocking foul is called on Jeff Newbauer of LaSalle. See, that's the pace right there that Notre Dame wants to play at. They want to get into some tra transition. And I let's take a look. See, now let's see if he charges here. Gets rid of the ball. Boy, I want to tell you, that's a pretty close call right there that Joey Sylvester made. And that's, now I realize why Jeff Neubauer came stopping out from underneath the basket. Speedy Morris along the LaSalle bench. He's got Ron Holland back in the ball game and has taken the fun low out. And now a foul call down in the lane. And I think they've got Keith Tower this time. The call will go against Notre Dame. His second personal foul. Tower will come out of there. He's going to be replaced by John Ross, the 6'9 sophomore from Wabash, Indiana. The young man has been playing very well lately. Played well against Kentucky, played well against Southern Cal. John wants him to be a four and a five man. He's comfortable at the four, Fred, but not at the five spot inside because he's not a post player. Getting some solid playing time, 14 minutes of ball game and look out. Here's Jack Hurd again with another three. He has stuck three threes. He has 11 points. That is 15-12 LaSalle by three. Boy, there's a young man. He started every game 101 straight games in his career here at LaSalle. He is a hard-nosed basketball player. John Ross kicks it off. Elmer Bennett's three is too strong. LaFonso Ellis got a hand on it. Couldn't hold it. And Hurd gets it to Randy Wood. A long pass up court to Levers. Too strong and he's able to save it back outside but it's a backcourt violation. And Notre Dame will get it back. 
<laughs> Milk for labor suspired his chewing. <laughs> you do that under the defensive end, that's exactly where you want to throw it, Fred. Don't ever throw it under your own basket. That time he didn't have to throw it that far, but I guess it's easier said than done when you're sitting here. Good hustle. Ellis gets it inbounds. Elmer Bennett with a basketball. Irish need to get Elmer Bennett started. He's got one two-point goal in the ball game. He's missed a couple of three-point tries. Again, the attack to the Sal zone. Scores just staying back in that zone, making Notre Dame prove that they can beat it. And there's a deflection, but a nice save by Damon Sweet. It comes baseline to Lafonso Ellis. Now Bennett in the lane, tries to fire it back inside. Maybe they're too unselfish. Right Absolutely, now. Fred. There is a shot. There's no way in the world that Lafonso Ellis should not have taken that ball up to that glass and drawn the foul and a chance for a three-point play. Fifth Notre Dame turnover, 11.59 left in our first half. LaSalle up by three at this break. second lane watch when he gets the basketball he steps into the lane he might be surrounded right there but when you're the size he is at 6 10 240 you've got to go up there and draw some contact and finish the shot Irish have turned down two or three good shots tonight and while we have a moment let's remind you that the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the University of Notre Dame and any use rebroadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the University of Notre Dame and host creative communications is prohibited and that's Ron Holland who's averaging only seven points a game knocking down his fourth point already in this one and the scores go up by five their biggest lead of the night. Alfonso Ellis called for a charge at the baseline. His first foul. Team foul number five on Notre Dame. LaSalle's been whistled for two. I'll tell you, the LaSalle zone is causing Notre Dame mammoth problems, Fred. First of all, because they're not getting good shots. Secondly, it's negating all of their team speed, and it's got Notre Dame standing around. You agree? I agree, and I think Damon Sweet and Elmer Bennett might have to begin to change yep. that. Yep, yep. They've got to start creating something and penetrating against that zone. Jack Bird spin move in the circle and gets the shot down. Posting in the lineup now for Notre Dame, taking on Jack Hurd, and Hurd hits for his 13th point of the night. LaSalle on a 12-4 run, now up by seven over the air. Now you can see why Hurd and Woods are averaging 45 points a game between them. Now Sweet with a nice move with a little soft shot. Five points for Damon Sweet, the 6'5 senior from Beaumont, Texas. What a good athlete he is. Led the Irish in scoring last year, is again this year. That's Ron Holland, a transfer from St. Bonaventure. Nearly lost by Jack Hurd. Carl Cozen way outside to pick him up. Now Milko Levers. John Ross defending, and Levers takes the drive. Shot changed by LaFonso Ellis, and the Irish having a little trouble handling it. Elmer Bennett gets control. They've got Sweet, who he had a three-pointer turned it down. Now a nice fake gets Newbauer in the air, and Elmer Bennett knocks one down. Sweet. Sweet now has seven points on the night. He has gone to work. Exactly what you said. They've got to start penetrating and creating some action and getting that zone to move and then find the creases. Oh, there's her. Short with the three that time as Cozen made a run at him and Cozen gets the long rebound. Here come the Irish down just three. Damon Sweet off the dribble, kicks it down on the baseline to Ross and back outside to Elmer Bennett. Now let's see how they attack the zone this time. You don't want to get standing. And Cozen's going to launch one. Too strong with the flag. Carl Cozen can shoot the three, and besides the defensive end, that may be a reason he's in there now to help us result. See, when they take those kinds of shots, every time they've got nothing but one shot when they've missed. No second or third kickbacks. One and done. That is not good. Newbauer, no go reverse. Nice bounce pass inside to Randy Woods, and he missed the easy shot in inside. Rebounded Lafonso Ellis. Irish down three with 9.17 left in the half, and Damon Sweet's going to try it. Come up short, but the Irish have the rebound. Tipped outside to Bennett. Notre Dame just one offensive rebound so far in this game. That was the one that Ellis got very early in the contest. Sweet. 
Morrow goes in deep in the corner. Now they feed it right in the middle. Inside out they go. And that almost freed Elmer Bennett, but he took a dribble and a jump shot there instead and didn't get it down. And now foul's going to go against Carl Cozen, reaching on the rebound try. His first foul. Well, I think, 16, excuse LaSalle. me, Fred. I think what both teams have to remember, especially Notre Dame, we talked about it earlier, the long shots which Hurd and Woods take for the three-pointers means the long rebounds. That's what happened to Cozen right there. It was a longer shot, and he went at the wrong angle to try to go to get offensive rebounding position. So Tiki Colombo back in the lineup for LaSalle, and Billy Taylor, you saw, coming back in for Notre Dame. The 6'4 freshman from Aurora West High School in Illinois might be the best player on this club when the year is over. Oh, John Ross got a hand on it. Now he and Milko Levers collide. Levers goes down. It was incidental contact, and Levers is all right. The ball is out of bounds to LaSalle. Now in the Explorer lineup, Paul Burke, a 6'1 freshman from Chestnut Hill Academy here in Philadelphia, checks in. Good. Jam up in a circle. <laughs> Everybody tries eight to get on one spot. Ten. Ball Burke with a basketball for LaSalle. The Irish step up the defensive pressure now. Blitz Wooten is in there also from Explorers. Umbo going down low, and I think John Watts got whistled for the foul against Milko Levers, and that is going to be the first foul on John Watts. But from here on out, LaSalle will be in the one and one. That is the 17th foul on Notre Dame. Only two. As we talked about earlier today, Fred. The three first three substitutes for Speedy, all freshmen in the game right now. So you've got three freshmen, you've got Milko, and you've got Randy Woods, two seniors. Colombo is a freshman, Paul Burke's a freshman, Blitz Gluten a freshman. So a young lineup out there right now, and we'll see if Notre Dame can take advantage. Milko Levers, 64% free throw shooter. His first point of the night. In high school, he was into soccer, swimming, and karate. Had a medical redshirt here as a freshman from the Netherlands, but played high school basketball for a while in this country. And now with the miss. Lafonso Ellis still over Bennett. Now Ross kicks it inside out to Bennett. They've got sweet loose for three on the wing, and it's good. Good ball movement. <laughs> Ten points for Damon Sweet. He stuck a pair of three-point attempts, and now it's a one-point lead to the South with 8.06. Newbauer, or rather Burke with the basketball, and the shot's going to go. Paul Burke got the drive. The freshman from Philadelphia. Bader inside Lafonso and back out to Bennett. Now Sweet takes the dribble. Nice jump shot. Now he's got the move to go. You see, as soon as they kick that ball into Fonz, Fred, double and triple teaming him. So that's why Sweet and Bennett have got to get into that offense. And Sweet now is in four out of six field goal attempts. LaSalle up by a point. Ross outside with Levers. He's picked up the dribble. And Bennett trying to deny the pass to Woods. Can't. Woods can't get the shot down. And a foul is going to go against LaSalle's Milko Levers, his first personal foul. The third on LaSalle, and Randy Woods has but two points so far in this game and has missed a couple of easy shots inside. You bet. He, he is really struggling right now. Speedy Morris wants to talk to his club. We have timeout in Philadelphia. 7.26 left in our first half. The Irish down by one to LaSalle. To make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. It's a car born of intelligent engineering. It's 100,000 ideas fused into one. It's responsive, innovative, refined. It's a driver's side airbag and anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new 88 Royale LS. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. On a cold Minnesota Sunday in January, 
You're invited to a red-hot game, the Super Bowl. And the official Super Bowl 26 program captures all the excitement of this great event with over 260 pages of features, photos, and a special football card insert. All for only $9.95 plus shipping. Call 1-800-SUPER-BOWL to order your official program now and reserve the hottest souvenir from America's biggest game. The sell by one, still 726 left in first half action here. Let's go back and pick up former action. Well, they're wide open. You absolutely have to take that shot, and he seems to be in a rhythm right now. But as you and I were just saying, here's what happens now. When the zone starts to come out, when the ball is moved, now he has the ability to put that thing on the floor, and he hits the crease right there, Fred, and the guy is in a groove, and he's got to continue to do that. He's hit four out of six shots now. Notre Dame, two for seven from three-point range. Mm -hmm. Both of them sweet. LaSalle, three for five. All three of them heard. Swing the ball, reverse the ball. How many times have you heard? Oh, boy. Yeah, and it, as trite as it is, you know, you just have to you have to analyze it that way. See what Notre Dame does now on the attack. Sweet kicks it off the side. Lafonso Ellis still moving it rather slowly, and Taylor pops wide open in the middle, and a turnaround jump shot good. Billy Taylor's first two points tonight. Boy, he is fundamentally sound. His father, Dennis, was a very good basketball player at Northern Illinois. Good training from his dad and good high school training. He is fundamentally sound. No call. Levers using an arm to hold Ross off. Misses the shot. Lafonso rebound to Bennett. And it's going to be a blocking foul against Paul Burke of LaSalle. He just didn't give Bennett time to get set. You've got to give him a step after he catches the ball. And Neubauer didn't. Yep. Now, we said they can't depend on any inside help. Notre Dame's inside players. So Ross and Ellis are playing one-on-one -on -one inside because they got to protect the three-point shooters. There's Ellis getting his fifth rebound on the other side. Ellis down low on the baseline. Bennett, sweet. That's not quick enough. They're going to have to move the ball faster to get somebody open. Now Bennett. See, now the other thing is, well, go ahead, Fred, go ahead. Sweet shot won't go, and the rebound to Randy Wood, and up come the Explorers. They want to run it this time. Wood's going to pull up and fire and get it. A two from the top of the circle for Randy Woods, his fourth point of the night. The Irish had an 11-4 run going. Now they're down by a point. When the ball is on, now look where Bennett is. Look where Bennett is on your screen. He should be moving right in there, right up, so that when they reverse the ball, Fred, he's got a just a good baby jump shot. Well, he's in there for the second time, shaking open in the circle, and Bennett was sitting out there looking for him and found him in a hurry. He got rid of the ball to him, and Notre Dame back up by one. Now we got a seesaw ball game going at the Civic Center in Philadelphia. Billy Taylor, two for three from the field so far tonight. Burke to Levers. And a loss all over him that far out on the floor, guarding a center that closely. There's Hurd with a turnaround jump shot. No, Lafonso is sixth rebound, and he's fouled. The second on Milko Levers. And the fifth on LaSalle. The Irish have committed seven already. Half a dozen rebounds. LaFonso Ellis, he has the five points in the ball game, but he has the six rebounds. Young man is ninth in the country in rebounding, averaging 11-plus a game. And you can see why. When that comes off of that defensive glass, he has great reaction to that glass. Homer Bennett. Damon Sweet. Homer Bennett. Sweet backs out. Now Sweet dumps the right in the middle to Billy Taylor, and he has it taken away. Knocked out of there by Burke. Picked up by Hurd. And Burke on the run out. Oh, tough shot. Paul Burke able to hesitate, lean back in the air, and still knock the shot down on the south. Goes up by a point. Damon Sweet, Lafonso Ellis, try to get it in the middle, Taylor, knocked loose by Hurd. Hurd with a crossover dribble at midcourt, wants to take the drive and misses. And here comes Damon Sweet and the Irish come up running. Bennett to the wing. Oh. Hook shot, no, and the rebound to Milko Louvers. Double team and gets it out of there. Picked up by Jeff Neubauer. And the shot good by Blitz Wooten. Very smart by Neubauer, Fred, because as soon as he saw the double team there, he knew they had the numbers, and he got it up and got it right into the right person's hands. First two points for Blitz Wooten, a 6'7 freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, across the rim. Just really filled that lane well and put himself in a position to score. Billy Taylor shot misses off the baseline. Ball Burke. 
a long pass and picked up nicely by Hurd. He's fouled. That was some pass from Burton through traffic over the top of the traffic, actually, to Jack Hurd. And Hurd was fouled. He'll go to the line as 6'6 senior. Watch this now. There is the nice pass right there. See how he filled the lane? Right over there, put it in a position where he could really handle it and get it up on the glass, but have the contact out on the floor, not underneath. Notre Dame has really gotten out of sync the last three or four minutes offensively, Fred. They are really not in any kind of a rhythm right now, and that's been one of their problems. They haven't been able to be consistent for that 40 minutes, which is what you've got to do. Billy Taylor and Elmer Bennett come out of the ballgame for Notre Dame. Brooks Goyer is in, and Carl Cozen back in for the Irish. Three-point lead LaSalle, and make it four as Jack Hurd hits his first free throw attempt of the night. 76% free throw shooter. He has 14 points in this contest. He's averaging 17 a game. And he has this one off to a great start. And the short with a try, and Ellis claims another rebound. Seven for Lafonso. Now Brooks Boyer at midcourt. Got to be a third baseman. Got to be a third baseman. And as well, you did ask him about that, right? I said it's shortstop, but it's not play third. I'll play third. He was named after Brooks Brothers. Damon Sweet, oh, nice move. He just fussed Burke, but then the shot wouldn't fall and rebounded by Jack Herb. But what a nice move. That will win some ball games for you if you keep going at it. Look at Herb. Three is in and out. Touch shooting one for Jack Herb, and now a foul is going to be called on Blitz Wooten of LaSalle, his first. Ellis with another rebound. Let's go back to the end of the play. Paul Burke, I guess, got the foul. There's, there's the end of that play. And we have a break here with 3.33 left in our first half. LaSalle leading Notre Dame by four at 29-25. Hey, sports fans, get a ticket to Bud Bowl 4, and you could win a million dollars cash. A million bucks? But you can't get that ticket just anywhere. Bud Bowl tickets? Huh? Bud Bowl tickets. Sorry. Bud Bowl tickets? Bud Bowl. tickets. Pick up your Bud ticket Bud Bud where you buy Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft beer. And you just might be a winner. Hey, guys, is this the line for... You know, it's not that important. Never mind. Bud Bowl 4. This time it's for a million bucks. Notre Dame began 150 years ago, and its people still talk about the same thing. Inquiry, belief, and community. That it is a place where people care about one another. Care enough to argue and fight over issues that they think are important, mm -hmm. care enough to really relish the friendships um, that are formed here and that last a lifetime, um, care enough to take their students' views seriously. 900-896-2333, the Sports Channel America Sports Hotline for all the scores. In a 3-2 overtime thriller. For sports news. Some big free agent signings today. 1-900-896-2333 is all you need, 24 hours a day, every day. Get late-breaking results and news on your favorite sport. For basketball, press 1 now. 1-900-896-2333, the Sports Channel America Sports Hotline. Call today. Three thirty-three left in the first half. Seven points has been the biggest lead. We're at the Civic Center in Philadelphia. LaSalle up by four right now as we approach the end of the first half. Our next television game, Missouri-Notre Dame. On Thursday, January 22nd, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Boy, Missouri playing well. Got beat for the first time last night. January 23rd, Missouri-Notre Dame. From the Joyce Athletic and Convocation Center at halftime, we're going to talk to this man. Coach Jimmy Black in his first year on the Notre Dame campus. Boy, what an outstanding young guy and young coach he is. And what a basketball background. Jack Hurd off the steal. Got it. Oh, what a first half he has had. 16 points for Jack Hurd, a 6'6 senior. It's rather obvious you don't want that to happen after a timeout, right? Now 31-25, LaSalle by six now. Drops it down to the baseline, and Bennett's fadeaway jumper on the rim won't fall. John Ross saves the rebound. He's got Bennett wide open off the baseline and too strong with the drive. Goes in fighting for the rebound, can't come up with it. 
Now Burke for LaSalle, the Explorers by six. Bird wanted a shot out there, and Ross shut him down nicely. A 7-0 run by LaSalle. Now Ross knocks the ball loose, goes and goes to the floor. He's tied up in the position arrow, belongs to LaSalle. It'll be Explorer basketball. Look at the possession arrow. That one belongs to Sal. Look, can you see the red hat in the corner there? That is Bob McKee, who has done over 2,400 games as the official stats guy here in Philadelphia. They got the hat from Dr. Naismith. The hat has gone over 2,400 games, I'll tell you. That hat has been in and out of style about five times in its history. Oh, I don't believe that shot. Randy Woods buried a long three while falling backwards. He now has seven points. And look out, LaSalle is up by nine. A 10-0 run now for the Explorers, and a careless foul by Randy Woods out front, a little too eager to come up with a steal. Second foul on Randy Woods. This guy has unbelievable range. I've watched enough tapes on LaSalle, and that's nothing. Honest to God, Fred, he'll take some shots before this game is over that'll probably have you jumping right out of your seat. But there was a case of a little too late in reacting. There are anticipators and reactors, and you win with anticipators and lose with reactors, and you're just a step too slow. Malik Russell's free throw attempt is good. He'll have another coming. First point for the 6 7 freshman from Brooklyn. Now Damon Sweet is in. Brooks Boyer back out for Notre Dame. Malik Russell seeing his first action. Went to Poly Prep High School in Brooklyn. You'll have a homecoming at the Garden on Saturday against North Carolina. The young man has a ton of ability. Rudd. Can't quite knock the free throw down and the rebound to LaSalle. They scores by eight. 223 left in the first half and four. 224 for the Irish. Or that's Ron Hall. Blocked and rejected in there nicely by Alfonso Ellis. Bennett in traffic is going to have to reset the dribble and now kick it off on the wing. Damon Sweet. Alfonso has a man posted. Now they get help in there. His shot won't go. The rebound, no. The rebound, yes. Alfonso with three tries knocks it down on the Irish back within six. You don't succeed. Try, try again. That's a perfect example. That time, he didn't kick it out. He kept it in there and created some action. Boy, they, he posted his man, and he got help immediately. Oh, look at he was. He's not that easy. How about the release? How about the release? Well, it took him a long time to shoot. <laughs> yeah. Nine points now for Randy Woods, 36-28. Felt like one of the right shooters. Oh boy, yeah. Seven points now for Randy for Lamonzo Ellis and eight rebounds. Now Bennett, John Ross, Damon Sweet. What a move he put on, and now the double team. The ball knocked loose, but picked up by Bennett. The shot, no. What a rebound, Lamonzo Ellis. That was his ninth rebound of the ball game, and a very tough one. He lost the ball in traffic, but what an effort. Boy, that's what you call a great reaction to the offensive glass and just lost control of it when he went to put it down on the floor. Let's out of the ball game now for LaSalle. Back in the ball game now is Jack Hurd. I mentioned Hurd trying a three a while ago. It wasn't Hurd. It was Newbound. Or Burke. Speedy didn't get hurt when he had the three freshmen on the floor at one time. They gave him some nice minutes. They're up by eight points Absolutely right now. Absolutely, they did. Just 59 seconds left in the half, and Randy Woods is going to take the drive, and he got that one down. He missed two drive shots earlier, but he's rolling now. Got the clear out, and Elmer Bennett didn't force him back into the middle of the floor where he could get some help. It was obvious what they were doing, and Bennett just didn't read it. LaSalle has opened a 10-point lead here as we approach halftime. 40 seconds left in the half. Alfonso Ellis. Number 29 seconds left in the half. 22 on the shot clock. Malik Russell back outside Bennett. 17 on the shot clock. Dan McLeod just said, open it up. Open it up. They'll stay right in that zone, I'll tell you that. And as soon as they start to drive, you watch the wingmen in the zone come out here and try to put the pressure on. Four on the shot clock. Sweet for three from the deep corner. No. Malik Russell got by with a shove and comes up with a rebound. The shot won't go. And the rebound to her at midcourt. Lost the handle. Now fires for three and it doesn't drop. And we are at halftime at the Civic Center in Philadelphia, and LaSalle, with a good finish to that first half, has opened up the biggest lead of the game. A 38-28 advantage as John McLeod heads for the locker room of the Irish, his team down by 10. We'll be back. 
There are 28 teams in the NFL, yet they all share the same dream, to be here at the Metrodome on January the 26th. Only one magazine captures all the drama, all the excitement that leads to football's final conflict, the Sporting News. Each week you get reports on every pro team. It's a hard-hitting look at football you just can't get anywhere else. So to follow all of the drama, all of the excitement, you need the Sporting News. It isn't necessary to see a good tackle, you can hear it. From what I see here this afternoon, I think we're going to have a pretty good team. The athletic department of the University of Notre Dame is proud to present its exclusive collection of sportswear and gift items. Clothing and accessories of the highest quality that reflect Notre Dame's tradition of excellence. Call 1-800-345-5027 to receive a free catalog. If your VCR is a pain to program, then get rid of it and get the one from RCA with VCR Plus built in. To record a show, just look for the VCR Plus code in your TV listing. Then punch it in. It's as simple as that. So if you had it with your old VCR, get rid of it and get the easy to use RCA VCR with VCR Plus built in. Only $29.95. Become an insider's member now. Who joins these NFL fan clubs anyway? I did, and I got a lifetime membership in my team's fan club. Plus discounts on special merchandise for only $29.95. $29.95? Yeah, plus this exclusive membership kit with offers worth over $150. How do I join? Send $29.95, your name, address, and favorite team to Insiders, P.O. Box 9101, Oak Brook, Illinois, 60522. Or call 900-535-9000 for details. Become an insider of your favorite team now. On your hand, and who doesn't want to be like Mike? The Irish could use him right now. They got it off to a pretty good start, Jim Gibbons, I would say. They took the early lead in the ball game, stayed with LaSalle till about the 15-minute mark, but the last five minutes were very unkind yeah. to Notre Dame and good LaSalle. I thought they started out slow. I thought they found their comfort zone, and in the last 10 minutes, I thought was very bad. No, they couldn't get any chemistry, no rhythm whatsoever, and were outscored 12 to 3 in the last five minutes. Seemed I, very deliberate against the zone. Yeah, uh, I, I, as I said earlier, I didn't think there was enough ball movement and certainly not enough player movement. Now, on the other side, I think Jackie Hurd carried LaSalle for about the first 10 minutes of the game. I thought he got good minutes, as you said, out of the freshman, and then I thought Randy Woods caught on fire. And when you got Woods and Hurd both hot, then you've got additional problem. Well, when Woods couldn't get it going early, Hurd did, and, and they say when Hurd gets off to a great start, look out. Well, it oh. happened here tonight, and he has 16 points at halftime. Randy Woods, very quiet, had four until about the last five minutes of the half, uh -huh. and as you say, he turned it on, but down 10 at halftime against a team like LaSalle, if Hurd should go cold in the second half, or just one of them go cold, 10 points is certainly not insurmountable. One thing you can be sure of, Speedy will stay in that zone until Notre Dame forces him out of it, because their outside shooting isn't getting it done against that zone. And we're going to see if the Irish can do that over the course of the second half here. Again, good start for Notre Dame. They held the early lead, had a lead of one time of five points, but now at halftime, down by ten. We'll be back to talk to Notre Dame assistant coach Jimmy Black right after you watch this. Great tradition of basketball there. Young guy with great basketball experience, Coach. Well, I've been fortunate. Freshmen, just like everybody else, they're all learning what we're trying to do. So it makes it fun. We're doing a lot of teaching. So bring you the most... Terribly <laughs> trumpeting throughout the auditorium tonight compared to what he had last night. Boy. It's good, good to be here with you, Jim. Yeah, well, and Go back and take a look at half <laughs> some highlights. When the game started, I think they were hearing both, <laughs> both of us. <laughs> this is Lafonso getting yep. out. There's the steal and the dunk. He's got seven points and nine rebounds and one block, and that's a pretty good 20. There's Jack Hurd, three of five from three-point range. And as you said, Fred, a real streaky three-point shooter, and he's hot. Now Sweet. 
five of ten in the first half. Not bad. Twelve points, a good 20 minutes for Elmer, or for uh, Damon, and he got active right after that five, six minute mark when you said he's got to start making making some movement. Now you got Sweet, two of six from three point range. Notre Dame has only taken uh, 66, and he has 21 of them. Now there's Woods. Boy, you talk, he's taken 89 three-point shots on the year, second in the country, Fred, averaging 4.5 made per game. There's Jackie Hurd, 16 points, and really carried him in the first 20 minutes. Boy, they have, have been a twin prong threat now for oh, LaSalle in this ballgame. Not as you expected they would have been. Damon Sweet with a dozen points. Leading the Irish here, LaFonso Wallace has seven points at halftime. And Billy Taylor hit two quick turnaround jump shots back to back for four. There's Hurd with a 16. He got it off to just a great start for LaSalle. Woods coming on late in the half, finished with 11. And Bron Holland had four. And Burke came up with four points for LaSalle. And again, the 10 point lead to the Explorers here at halftime. So, as we mentioned, work to do for the Irish in 20 yeah. minutes to get it done. Yeah, I, I don't think this game is very complicated. You and I talked about it on the way over here for the workout this morning. I think Notre Dame just has to protect that basketball and they have to do the things that we've talked about. That is to get ball movement and to get player movement and get the game at a faster pace because right now I think it's in LaSalle's comfort zone. I'll tell you something that's going to help Notre Dame though. I've known John McLeod for a long time and now he's got the, the, the seniors in the locker room over the halftime. He has a chance to make some adjustments and it's going to be interesting to see how they come out and play to open the second. Yeah, half. It, you know, it's interesting what he's gone through, Fred, after 18 years in the pros. And you mentioned at breakfast this morning what a remarkable job he did of turning that program around in Oklahoma. And that's why I said about the Southern Cal game, he is working two-a-days, three-hour practices just to get these people where they know that this system is going to work offensively and defensively. And it's been tough on them because they've not played a man-to-man -man defense for a long time because Tigger played that matchup zone. Uh, he's got that pro set basketball that he uses with a lot of set plays. They've, LaSalle has taken that completely away from Notre Dame tonight. They've taken him out of their offense and have him standing around shooting three-pointers. Well, we'll see what John McLeod can get done here at halftime. I tell you what, you've got a great coach and a gentleman on your hands in Notre Dame and John McLeod, and he'll get this program built. Halftime, they're down 10. He'd like to build a second half. We'll be back to take a look at first half stats right after you watch this. So Notre Dame's man mission in the second half should have better take care of the basketball and hope that things can work themselves out now. Being down 10 on the road is not much fun, but this is a little bit of a neutral arena that this has not been LaSalle's home court until this year here in the Civic Center. You're right. Now, one other point as we look at these stats, Fred, and I remember I've said to you in the stand-up, Almer Bennett has got to be productive, and right now he has got just two points, one of eight from the field. That cannot happen. Now, everybody knows he doesn't feel comfortable playing the point guard. He'd rather play the two position, but he's been playing that point, and he just has to get that consistency back and give them the scoring that they need. The Irish starting lineup, the same as it was to begin the ball game, with Ellis, Taylor, Tower, Bennett, and Sweet out there, and LaSalle opening the same way as they did with Holland Hurd, Levers, Neubauer, and Woods. Jack Hurd with 16 points, Randy Woods with 11, Damon Sweet with a dozen leading Notre Dame, LaFonso Wallace with seven. With that big night on the boards already, he has nine rebounds already, four off the offensive end. Well, here's the there zone. There it is. <laughs> Speedy is going to make him prove that oh, you can beat the zone. Absolutely. That's Elmer Bennett popping off a baseline screen, but didn't take the shot. Now LaFonso in the middle had it knocked loose and taken away by LaSalle. Ellis dives back in. The possession arrow belongs to LaSalle. Not a good first position. Interesting. Didn't you see a lot more movement in the first sequence yes. right there from Notre Dame? And they, they weren't going to stand around against that zone. And they had Bennett with a new cut mm -hmm. off the baseline. Yep, absolutely. They've done some new things offensively against the zone. Now the Irish on defense. Ron Holland. We've got some bodies in Philadelphia. St. Joe has Matty Gupas' son over there. He's about the same size as John Holland and Sal. There's a foul going against Notre Dame. John McLeod with a mild ejection. Number Bennett's second personal foul. First team foul of the second half. There's John McLeod working very quietly with Jody Sylvester, but making a point. Look at Ron Holland use his side over the air ball from four feet away, and now a foul goes against Jack Hurd, the first on Hurd, 
Then some things went the Irish way. Maybe well, the luck will turn a little bit. I'll tell you, right off of the four men that were lined at the free throw line, Randy Woods broke right in, and if he'd have gotten the ball up one split second sooner, they'd have broken down Notre Dame's out-of-bound defense. Irish go from here to New York to play North Carolina in Madison Square Garden. Look at Billy Taylor square up and shoot the jump shot. Is that pretty? A lot of those zones are matchups, Fred, and I'm a firm believer that when people match up, you run your regular offense against that matchup, and that's what Notre Dame's doing right now. They're running their offense. And man offense, and inside it goes the Levers. Lost the handle. Ron Holland picked it up, and he's fouled. Count the basket. Ron Holland just got a garbage bucket for his sixth point of the night, and he will go to the free throw line as the loose ball situation goes to LaSalle this time. Well, he's no, he's, he knows he's up against a guy, Ellis, who's got 135 block shots. Now, here's a classic example <laughs> of forcing the contact and finishing the shot. There's a guy that's 245 pounds going up against the 240-pound Ellis. Did you see Lofonzo come down with his hands behind his back, totally innocent of any wrongdoing, and got called <laughs> he looked at us coming down with his hands behind his back. Three-point play for LaSalle. Makes it 41-30. The Explorers by 11 now. That's the biggest lead in the game for either team. Now look at the defense. Out of the switch. zone and into the man-to-man. -man. Now they've gone to the man-to-man. -man. First look Notre Dame's had at it tonight. You see how they adjust. Oh, Bennett off a double screen from Ellis and Towers. Stuck to three. Elmer Bennett knocked it down. No comparison in the Notre Dame offense the first two or three minutes here than the first 20 minutes in the first half. Lafonso Ellis and Keith Tower set up quite a curtain for Bennett, and he stuck the three, and it's an eight-point lead to LaSalle right now. Look at Ellis cover Ron Holland way outside. There's Randy Woods. Oh, what a shooter he is. A plate away three. He has 14 points. And now we've got a walking call against Notre Dame in backcourt. The Irish turn it over. John McLeod looking on with some concern. Assistant coaches on either side. There's Speedy Morris to LaSalle. Coach. 12 turnovers, Notre Dame. Only four LaSalle. Well, been a real bugaboo for Notre Dame. They were turning it over a lot early in the year and not shooting well. And I guess that's a pretty bad, nice combination. Oh, what a great backdoor, Fred. 16 points now for Randy Wood. Notre Dame was minus 42 in the turnover department coming into the game. John McLeod wants to stop this right here. He is down 13 points at the onset of the second half. The biggest lead of the ball game to LaSalle. And John McLeod gets timeout with 17.53 left in the game to talk about it. Sometimes I dream that he is me. That's how I dream to be. A dream I move. A dream I grew. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like Mike. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Be like Mike. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Now you can watch Notre Dame football year round. Catch all the excitement of the 1991 season when you order the Fighting Irish Highlight Video. It's only $19.99 plus $5 shipping and handling. Send check or money order to 1991 Irish Highlights, 401 East Colfax Street, Suite 207A, South Bend, Indiana, 46617. Or charge by phone with Visa or MasterCard, 1-800-488-3883. Relive the excitement and emotion that is Notre Dame. Planning. Where'd I get the capital to start this business with my daughter? By investing for the long haul. And forget full commission brokers. I called Charles Schwab, Muni's mutual funds, blue chips, and I saved plenty with Schwab's low commissions. Every day I tell my daughter, think long term, make your own decisions, be your own man. For a free Schwab fact kit, call toll free 800-841-0300. Listen, when the ball moves, you move. When the man moves, you man. Defensively, you move. Watch the back door on the right-hand side of your screen. They, Elmer Bennett came out to take the three-point shot away from him. Very good move on Randy Woods' part. He just simply backdoored him, and they gave him the pass right where he had to have it. Third going to have to find a way to slow him down now. He got hot at the, at the finish of the first half and now has 16 points. LaSalle now with 20 points off turnover. Notre Dame only four wow. off turnovers. That is a big statistic right there. The turnover has not been kind to the Irish no. so far tonight. Now they have big work to do. They're down 13. And we we'll see LaSalle back in the zone. Sure. Right back in the zone. Willie Taylor. They gave him one look at the man-to-man. -man. 
Billy Taylor gets double team, picks up the dribble, dangerous pass, picked off by Jack Bird. And gets the bucket at the other end. Jack Bird has 18 and LaSalle up by 15 points now. First principle of offense, Fred, take the ball to the action. You can't make that pass in any kind of a game across the court. Now LaSalle is hit Notre Dame with an 8-0 run, just what the Irish did not want. Bronzo Ellis, there's Bennett, wide open, has a three-point try on the way, and good. Elmer Bennett hits his second three of the second half. He has eight points tonight. He's going to take a few threes to get the Irish back in it. They're down by 12. No call leapers for the basketball. New power to her. Shot no, and Lafonso Ellis rebound and kicks it out in a hurry to Sweet. He and Billy Taylor two on two, and Sweet's going to back it up. Very good judgment. Two on two, look for the trailers, get it out, get into your offense. Billy Taylor, oh, nice dish to the baseline, and Lafonso Ellis open inside for his ninth point. Nice pass that time. Ten point lead, LaSalle. Long way to go. 16 20 left in the game. The Irish can put a run together here. New power had it taken away by Damon Sweeney. Grant Sweet's jersey and nobody saw it, but that's all right. It worked out for Elmer Bennett at the other end, and he has 10. We see New Bauer grab Damon Sweet's jersey. When they get Sweet playing defense like that, you know he's in the system. That hasn't been one of his strong points, but give him credit. He caused the turnover in the two points. Randy Woods goes to work, and he's blocked down in there by Keith Tower. Out of bounds to LaSalle, but the Irish beginning to step up the pace yeah. on defense. Down by eight points now. Very good point, Fred, because they're playing with a lot more intensity on the defensive end. Uh -oh. That's a little too easy right there, but Ron Holland missed the shot. Ellis made him change it. Rebound to Tower. 7-0 run for Notre Dame, and they're looking for more. Sweet for three. No. 12 rebound Tower, and he got the stick back. 9-0 run for Notre Dame, and the Irish within six of LaSalle. Speedy's going to get one now. You talk about a good timeout. That's a 9-0 run after the timeout, practically, by McLeod. Speedy's seen enough. The Irish bench excited. They fought their way back in it here in Philadelphia. And this timeout comes with 15.29 left in the Irish. Down by in trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right guard sports stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. For over 22 years, our goal has always been to sell a fine product at the very best price. During the years, our business has grown, but our policies have not changed. Best price, best selection, and best service has made Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet the number one dealer in Chicagoland. And remember, we guarantee you can't beat our deal or we'll give you back the difference in cash. At Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet and Geo in Elmhurst at York and Roosevelt Roads, where, where you, you always, always save more money. Why do so many people choose Dunkin' Donuts coffee? We use our own special blend of the world's finest coffee beans. They don't. We grind our coffee seconds before brewing. They don't. We constantly brew our coffee fresh day and night. They, well, who knows? So the next time you think of going somewhere else for coffee, think again. Dunkin' Donuts, the freshest cup of coffee you can buy. It's the big time, the big shots. It's Big Five City Series Basketball, presented by Sharp's non-alcoholic brew, now at the Spectrum. In the history of college basketball, you know nothing beats the Big Five. Tickets are on sale now for LaSalle, Penn, St. Joe's, Temple, and Villanova games. Don't miss the fast break Sunday, January 19th, when St. Joe's takes on Temple and LaSalle meets Penn starting at 4.30 p.m. Tickets available at the Spectrum box office in all Ticketmaster locations or call 215-336-2000. The Big Five tradition is alive. A couple of shots from the inside. But Elmer Bennett has hit from the outside three times, two of them three-point goals. Look at the first half shooting the other yeah. game, and now the second half. They're capable of doing it, Fred. They were 16 of 18 at one point against Kentucky in the second half. I'll tell you what, the coaches felt they played well at Kentucky and didn't shoot well. If they said they could have shot the ball well, and it would been a much different kind of a game. And now they're forced turnover. I know, and Notre Dame's playing better right now yeah. at both ends of the floor. 
A lot of Irish fans here in the Civic Center in Philadelphia. Speedy Morris really getting into it now. He's starting to get disheveled. He's well, feeling okay, Jim. We ought to mention again. He had some chest pains a week ago. I know a lot of people were rather frightened by it, but he was checked out thoroughly. They say he's okay, and he says he feels much better. So that's great news. Damon Sweet hops off the screen. The jumper won't fall up, but finds a lot. Strong effort. Sweet's got another try. No. Billy Taylor with a step up. Power had a hand on it. Couldn't get it out of there. And now he's going to foul Ron Holland. But what an effort by Notre Dame. And keep that up and you'll be in the ball. That's it. That is great reaction to the offensive glass. I sense that the Sal players watch, Fred. I sense that Ron Holland and Milko Lieber kind of standing, kind of standing a little bit, watching, ball watching. And you've got Tower and you've got Taylor and you've got Ellis really getting active. Third personal foul on Tower tonight, but what an effort he made, and he's really putting forth the effort on that board. And now they try to take it down inside, and a foul is going to go, a hooking foul against LaSalle, Notre Dame basketball. Yep. Jack Hurd's second foul. Jack Hurd played. They were playing good post defense against him inside. Watch him force away now. Watch the contact. See that? That was one of the points of emphasis that they were going to try to clean that post play up. The Irish down six with a basketball. Randy Woods putting pressure on Bennett. Ellis turns and faces the basket. Now Billy Taylor. Now Damon Sweet. Tower wanted to go inside out. Takes the jumper instead and knocks it down. Keith Tower has six. And the Irish within four with 14-19 to play. Notre Dame has made a run after being down by 15. Better force turnover. Damon Sweet pressured the turnover on the far side. Boy, that's about three out of the last four possessions for LaSalle, Fred, that they have not gotten a shot at the basket, and Notre Dame has done it defensively. 14 minutes and seven seconds left in the ball game. Bennett off the screen from Tar. Great fake, got Woods in the air, and the shot is good. And a two-point deficit now for Notre Dame. Ten second-half points for Elmer Bennett. Little two-on-two -two basketball out front with Tower providing the screen for him. He got Woods off his feet and canned it. 13-0 run for the Irish. They're down two. Randy Woods getting pressure from Bennett. Fires a wild pass inside and out of bounds. It'll be Notre Dame basketball. Or are they going to change it? Jody Sylvester saying, no, it was tipped by Notre Dame. It's going to be LaSalle ball. Look at Speedy Morris saying, think, think, think. There's the Irish run in the last three and a half minutes. Some come back for Notre Dame. They're still down two. We've got a long way to go. John sure. McLeod yeah. <laughs> having a conversation. He had the ball, and the official couldn't get the ball for him. <laughs> and now a foul on Damon Sweet on the inbounds pass. His first foul of the night. <laughs> Team fouls so far in the second half. Notre Dame four, LaSalle two. Jack Hurd will handle the inbounds pass right by John McLeod. You saw him talking to Billy Taylor. Woods fires in a hurry. A little bit too strong. Then a tipped it. Couldn't control it. Great save by Sweet. But back to Bron Holland. Saving inbounds at the defensive end of the court. Bron Holland got his ninth point out of it. Exactly what we talked about earlier. Never throw that basketball back in under your own basket. He threw it right to Holland. Ellis, where there's some contact in the lane, Taylor couldn't come up with a pass. He was knocked off balance in there and picked up by LaSalle. Now Randy Woods in the lane is fouled. I believe they got Damon Sweet, and that'll be his second foul. Notre Dame got out of sequence, got out of sync on that last sequence down here, Fred. A bad entry pass number one, and Billy Taylor did not move to meet the basketball number two. He had the guy sealed off, and he should have moved to meet the ball. Now we've got a foul on the inbounds play. I believe it's Milko Levers. It is, and that will be his third personal foul. And LaSalle with a pat foul. They were playing the ball inbounds when he committed his third foul. Well, so the Irish down four get a foul. Notre Dame has picked up the tempo of the game, but it's also gotten to be a, rough, a lot rougher game since they picked up the tempo. Billy Taylor, Bennett. Now it comes Ellis. He tangles the levers low. The shot won't fall. The tip try, no. This ball picked up by Notre Dame. Lafonso Ellis. Three points right. Good by Elmer Bennett. His third play of the second half. 13 in the second half for Bennett. 15 in the game. And a one-point lead to LaSalle with 12.42 to play. Not bad when you were one of eight in the first 20 minutes, right? He has really come back. You said at halftime, Elmer Bennett had to get going, and he has with 13 second-half points. Foul 
call on Bennett. That will be his third personal foul. And now you got Bennett with three. With 12.30 left in the game. And he's going to have to be a little bit careful for a while. And they got somebody else on Randy Woods. Be interesting to see if he switches off on that. Because, boy, when he's having the hot hand with 13 points already in the first eight minutes, no way you want to get that guy a fourth foul. Hurd, who he's guarding first right now. Levers wants the jump shot. Off balance, try one go. Good defense in the post by Tower. Up comes Notre Dame. Bennett's an open court. Nice pitch to Taylor, and he got hammered by Paul Burke, the freshman from Philadelphia, his second foul. Not bad by Elmer Bennett, Fred. And here's why I'm going to say that. One of the best alley-oop combinations in the country right here is Bennett and Sweet. They've been doing it for four years, and Sweet can jump out. See him on the wing? Now, Bennett saw the player coming up right on his left-hand side, Billy Taylor, kind of faked the alley-oop, put the ball right in the hands of Billy Taylor. That's pretty good execution. Billy Taylor on the line has six points tonight. The freshman from Aurora, Illinois, West High School. LaSalle has Blitz Wooten in the game now. Replacing Milko Levers. Taylor hits the free throw. He has seven points. He looks like a basketball player, doesn't he, does. he, or is it me? He really does. Huh? He really does. He just, and I was glad to hear you say that at the shoot-around today, because, boy, he just looks like a quality basket. And he does it effortlessly, and that's what I like. And John Ross replaces Keith Cower now for Notre Dame. Billy Taylor with a chance to put the Irish in front after they fell behind by 15 early in the second half. We still have 12-17 to play in this game. That timeout that John McLeod took. Won't, won't be many more important than that. Very good point. He stopped the LaSalle run and started one of his own. Yeah, stopped the bleeding in a hurry. Irish up by one, their first lead since 25-24. First full court pressure of the night. That's Randy Woods try, one go. And suddenly he has cooled off and heard. Hasn't been heard from much in the second half. He has two second half points. So the Irish have shut down that two-pronged attack from LaSalle, and they've got one of their own going. Bennett, Damon Sweet, Lafonso Ellis. Ellis has been a, a real force on the boards tonight. Man to man again. Now this is where you take your time and try to break them down. Break that defense down. down. John Ross, Damon Sweet, Elmer Bennett, 17 left on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Irish leading by a point with 11.32 to play. Now 10 on the shot clock. Rafonso Ellis in heavy traffic has it taken away by Blitz Wooten for the South. Triple team, Fred. Had, a, had to kick the ball back out. You just can't go one on three. Andy Woods for the South. By the way, Damon Sweet is guarding Randy Woods now. Bennett is not on him at the moment. No, he's on Paul Burke. There's Randy Woods in the lane in the shot. Good tough shot, Randy Woods. Not much you can do about that. He has 18 points now on the night. And LaSalle by one. Now, Notre Dame has made the long run. Now you don't want to just sort of relax yeah. and fall back. This is when you have to keep the pressure on for a while. How many times have you seen that happen, right? Many. <laughs> Boy, people expend so much energy, get to that point, and then all of a sudden you just relax just for a second. Then that other team gets that momentum going, and boy, then you're in trouble again. Let's see if it happens. Keith Tower replaces John Ross, who sits down by his twin, Joe. Elmer Bennett got a screen from Tower and got it right back to him, and the shot no. Tower couldn't get the shot down inside. Now Burke up court, Randy Wood. Great dish on the far side. The three is good from the Tiki Colombo. His first points of the ninth, the freshman from Zaire. A four-point lead with Sal now with 10-15 left in this game. And Notre Dame needs to get a restart at Bennett. Great move, great dish. Oh, what a move and a pass from Bennett. Boy, that's great. That's really being unselfish. He had a wide open jump shot, but he caught the fans right out of the corner of his eye. And maybe that'll jump start the Irish offense again. 55 53 LaSalle. Behind the back dribble, spin move, off balance shot. No, strong rebound tower. 
Here come the Irish hunting the tie. Long pass. Billy Taylor working. And a great piece to swing his foul and count the bucket. The game is tied, and Damon Sweet will go to the line for Notre Dame. Boy, pretty good presence of mind by the freshman right there. He knew he was in a crowd. There wasn't much room to make any kind of a pass at all right here. Look at, look at, he got six players standing right there, but he did get the ball. He had the presence of mind to get it to Sweet at just the right time. If he'd have waited longer, Fred, he'd have taken any opportunity away from Sweet to get the ball up on the glass. First foul on Colombo. Sweet now with 14 points and seven rebounds. 14 for 16 at the free throw line this year. And the Irish are back in front by a point. That's what you like to see. Oh. Make the run, get the lead, lose it, come right back and reestablish the lead again. That's big for Notre Dame. Now 9.35 left in the contest. Burke to Bron Holland. Tower cover him outside, and Holland's going to take the left-handed drive, and a foul is going to be called. He missed the shot. Tower got a little too aggressive that time. Oh, a very good judgment on Bron Holland's part. He's a senior. He's got that instinct. He knew Tower came out and really overplayed him on the high side. He had no weak side help. Now watch, look at he had no weak side help because they were starting to run their offense and set some screens for Woods. And boy, Holland saw the break and he took it. Ron Holland, a 6'8 senior from Bangor, Pennsylvania. 13 for 15 at the line this year. Good free throw shooter. And that one got a lot of rim and went anyway. Nine points and five rebounds tonight for Bron Holland. Ten is his season high here at LaSalle. We're tied at 56. And still tied at 56. Ellis counted off that rebound to Dave Boy. Sweet. Oh, just touched it and got rid of it. Tower down low. They're going to work it to LaFonso Ellis and he's gone. No, they're going to call it a turnover. No foul call. Excuse me. Boy, and credit that to Paul Burke. As soon as that ball is going into Ellis, Fred, they are double and triple teaming. Burke got over there and he distracted Ellis and that's what caused the turnover. I like the theory, though. Found it in there, too. Oh, Let boy, absolutely. Work. Ron Holland working inside with a soft hook won't fall, and Ellis tangled up with Keith Tower. They all hit the deck. It's a jump ball. It'll be Notre Dame basketball. 14 rebounds for LaFonso Ellis. There's our man with the red hat and the possession <laughs> arrow. <laughs> Love the hat. The Irish so far have survived 16 turnovers. They have forced only nine. But Notre Dame with a 56 all tie. There are the turnovers. 16 Notre Dame, only nine LaSalle. Look at the points off turnovers. 16 point bulge yeah. to LaSalle, but still the game tied at 56. One thing to get that turnover, the other part of it is what do you do to convert it? That's the bottom line. Damon Sweet, now LaFonso Ellis. Turn around jumper Bennett. Oh, what nice work by Number Bennett. What a great second half he's having. 12 in the second half, 14 in the ball game. Make it 15 in the second half and 17 in the ball game for Bennett. Addition got bad there for a moment. 17 for Bennett in the two-point lead. Notre Dame. Randy Woods long three-point try. No strong rebound. Keep power for Notre Dame. Irish up two with the basketball. Billy Taylor alone on the baseline. Short with the try and he fouled Brown Holland. Billy Taylor picked up his third foul. <clears throat> what was it, Ellis? No, I think Billy Taylor. I they got Billy oh, Taylor. You're right. He came flying in he after really, the shot. You're right, Fred, and he had the right idea. If he'd have just waited until Brian Howard pulled that ball down, he might have had a chance of doing something with it, but it was a good instinct to a missed shot. Third foul on Billy Tater. Keith Tower has three. Elmer Bennett has three, and we still have 8.30 left to play in this game. Ron Holland, two for three at the line tonight. We'll go back there. Transferred from St. Bonaventure to LaSalle. That is a strong looking fellow right wow. there. 86% free throw shooter. Their shooting was a team 74% from the free throw line. They got some good free throw shooters. Steve Morris, the South coach. coach. High school basketball, oh. women's basketball there. Really paid his dues. I want to say something about the assistant, Joe Mahalik, who's right next to him. He took the Iona game last Saturday when Speedy checked himself into the hospital. That guy's 1-0, the only undefeated coach in Division I basketball. We're tied at 58. Bennett, great penetration. Jump shot. Good point. Elmer Bennett's taking it over. 17 in the second half, 19 in the game for Elmer Bennett. 
And the Irish lead by two with 8.08 left in the game. Good turnover. Near turnover, but whoa, oh, Randy Wood saved it and knocked down a three. Big break that time for the South. That's a good bad news, is it? It is. 21 now for Randy Woods, and that was simply a break for LaSalle. The ball bounced their way, and the Explorers have a one-point lead with 7.48 to play. LaSalle in that zone. Billy Taylor, Lafonso Ellis off a tower screen. Good. Lafonso Ellis has 13 points. Good ball work, Notre Dame. Boy, no comparison between the first 20 minutes and the second 13. John McLeod has really adjusted his club and turned it around here in the second half. Eppley went down by 15, and Bron Holland got open and stuck it. 14 points for Bron Holland. His season high. LaSalle by one. 7-12 left in the game. Damon Sweet. Billy Taylor running the baseline. Picks up the pass in the corner, but no shot there. Now Tower. Right back outside Sweet. 21 on the shot clock. Plenty of time for Notre Dame. Billy Taylor works open on the baseline. Short with a try. Tower strong rebound. Couldn't get it. Got it back. Tried it again and got it. Keith Tower hanging in there. A stick back. He has eight points. And the Irish up one. That's what they need. See, you said he's got eight points. That's all they need. Eight or ten points out of Keith Tower. Interesting that Neubauer and Jack Hurt are still on the bench for this out. And a turnover. The Irish will have the ball in the one-point lead when we come back. 6.35 left in the game. And we have a timeout here. There are 28 teams in the NFL, yet they all share the same dream to be here at the Metrodome on January the 26th. Only one magazine captures all the drama, all the excitement that leads to football's final conflict, the sporting news. Each week you get reports on every pro team. It's a hard-hitting look at football you just can't get anywhere else. So to follow all of the drama, all of the excitement, you need the sporting news. What does PRISM have for you in January 92? Seven exclusive Flyers games, 13 exclusive Sixers games, Big Five college basketball, Jim Barniak's sports scrapbook, the great sports debate, baseball's greatest games, 76ers Insider, Power Stick Hockey Week, for the most Flyers and Sixers games on TV, and the best lineup of exclusive sports features, you need PRISM. Call your cable company and get a better variety of sports. Get PRISM today. It's the big time, the big shots. It's Big Five City Series Basketball, presented by Sharp's non-alcoholic brew, now at the Spectrum. In the history of college basketball, you know nothing beats the Big Five. Tickets are on sale now for LaSalle, Penn, St. Joe's, Temple, and Villanova games. Don't miss the fast break Sunday, January 19th, when St. Joe's takes on Temple and LaSalle meets Penn starting at 4.30 p.m. Tickets available at the Spectrum box office and all Ticketmaster locations, or call 215-336-2000. The Big Five tradition is alive. Well, a lot of scouts on hand here tonight. They've been all over the country, I guess, uh, with Notre Dame. There's Jerry West in a multicolored sweater. I found it very interesting that he refused to play one-on-one -on -one with you before this game. <laughs> really. He said he's got all the money he, he needs right now. Let's go back to action. There's Lafonso off a good tower screen. You bet. Knocking the shot down. There are about a dozen scouts on hand here watching this basketball game tonight. Yeah, they had 11, 11 of them at the uh, forum in Los Angeles watching the other night. Lafonso Ellis back on court. He's had a strong night. Look at the shoes and the shorts now, the black shoes and the baggy shorts. Jim Gibbons, if five years ago somebody said to a college player, you've got to wear those shoes and those shorts, it's an I'm transferring, Coach. You bet. I'm out of here. I'm not going to do that. Oh. <laughs> now they're going to be their age. But that's not really it. Don't ask me why. To everything, there is a season. This is, we could all just stay in black high-top chucks. They didn't have to go through all those shoes. <laughs> Get it to sweep. 64-63 Irish. They got Lafonso low, and he is triple teamed and fouled. Oh, does he draw up? Actually, there were four guys there. Milko Levers arrived late. See, as soon as that ball goes into him, Fred, he's got to have the peripheral vision to see if they're dropping right away. If they are, then even before he catches that thing, he's got to kick it back out. The outside people then, when the defense starts to rush out, as you said, that's when you make your move forward. There's no way they can stop and guard you. 14 points for Lafonso Ellis tonight, and he's had a monster night on the boards for the Irish. Now a two-point lead to Notre Dame. 
14 points, 14 rebounds for Lafonso Ellis so far in this game. Another double-double, his sixth of the year. And now Notre Dame with a three-point lead. Biggest margin they've had in the second half. They led by five once in the first half, and now we're down to 6.05 left in the game. Neubauer, Blitz Wooten. Uh oh they've got hurt all alone, and a shot off the front of the rim. Rebound, Wooten, and a fadeaway jump shot. Good, that is a big bucket for the freshman from Trenton, New Jersey. His fourth point of the night, and a one-point lead to Notre Dame. You can trade baskets with him, though. It's fine. Irish up one with 538 left in the game. Just so they're not making three-pointers. Billy Taylor, and he walked. Turnover, charge Notre Dame. Their 17th turnover of the night. Now LaSalle with a chance to regain the lead. Tell you what they've made up for the for the turnovers is on the boards. Look at the rebound margin. Oh, Notre Dame plus 16 on the boards. Look at the offensive rebounds, plus nine. They've had some second chances. Randy Woods in heavy traffic. Oh, oh what a shot by Randy Woods. And he's fouled. What are you going to do about that? Or when he turns it up a notch or two with his quickness, Fred, watch. Now, he saw the fines. Look at him shift that basketball. He got the right arm out there. Watch him get the right arm to get Ellis away. Watch him now. Look at the left of Boyd. That is a great replay, and that's great action. Third foul on LaFonso Ellis. And Notre Dame basketball. The Irish down one with five minutes, 13 seconds left in the game. I feel like this is a big position now for Notre Dame. We, uh, we kind of thought this was going to be a good one, didn't we, Fred? Well, and it is going to be. It looks like it's going to go to the wire now. Sweet. They got Ellis inside again, and a tough two for Lafonso. Almost spoke too soon. I thought it was going to roll out of there. But he's the go-to guy now, and they're going to him. 17 for Lafonso Ellis to go with his big night on the boards. 14 rebounds. Irish up one. Look out. Randy Woods. That shot missed. Dan with a hot hand suddenly has missed a couple of trot shots now. And Notre Dame up one with the basketball. Bennett, they left him alone, and he sticks a three. Elmer Bennett with a great second half here in Philadelphia tonight. His fourth three of the second half. 20 in the second half, 22 in the ball game for only Emerald Bennett, and a four-point lead to Notre Dame with 4.20 to play. I think the only guy that can really hurt you is the guy with the ball, right? Fred and everybody on the set ran away, ran away from Bennett. Look, Carl Levers. Andy Woods almost lost it, but he's got it back, and the layup is good, and he's fouled. Count the bucket. Well, he has something. Randy Woods will go to the line again. I get the impression right now, Fred, that Randy Woods is going to take this basketball game over. He's going to have to win this game for LaSalle. Jackie Hurd is not back in sync. He was in it the first 10 minutes or so, but he hasn't been in sync about the last 20 minutes of this game, and Woods knows that all that responsibility is on his shoulder. Ron Holland back in for LaSalle. Randy Woods misses another free throw and a foul called on Hurd. You know, you mentioned him being out of sync, and you mentioned a while ago off the year during the commercial that Hurd has been sitting on the bench for quite some time. He has, and he got up and he asked if he could go back in that basketball game. I saw Neubauer get up when, when Paul Burke turned the ball over because they needed to get Neubauer in because his assist-to-turnover ratio is spectacular. One turnover only about every 40 minutes last year. So they needed him to run that offense, but I was surprised that Jackie was, he got him back in there. Keith Towers, first free throw attempt of the night. He's five for seven on the season, has eight points tonight, and seven rebounds. And got him. And the Irish lead by three with 4.07 to play on the road here at the Civic Center in Philadelphia tonight, trying to get their second straight win on the road before they head on in down the pike to New York in the garden to tangle with North Carolina. He was strong with a try. Lafonso had him screened out, but he's going to be called for a foul. He was backing Randy Woods and Noko Leverse out of there, and Ellis just picked up his fourth foul with 4.06 left in the game. Now he has four, and Billy Taylor has four. So the Irish have foul problems with four minutes to play. That is really ironic. Oh. I wish I had said something. On the first free throw, 
Levers and the Fonz, that boy, they have laid their bodies all over one another. And I was almost going to say, watch the action inside. Now let's see if, if the foul oh, didn't pushed off, I think, right there. And Woods got him, but that was too late. They could have gotten Woods for over the back, but the Fonz did push off earlier. Good call. No throw Levers. One for three at the line tonight. 64% shooter on the year. A 6'9 senior from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. John McLeod on the Irish bench. 406 left in the game. Notre Dame by three. And now by two as they get the basketball back. No pressure from LaSalle. The Irish are going to bring it up slowly. Damon Sweet hits midcourt. Picked up there by Jack Hurd. LaSalle has gone man to man. Billy Taylor dumps it inside to Tower. Inside out to Taylor. Look back at Tower. Couldn't get it. 348 left in the game. Notre Dame with a two-point lead. Now over Bennett. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Gets a screen from Tower. Pops a three in and out. A strong rebound by Damon Sweet, and he got the stick back. 17 for Damon Sweet. Notre Dame with a four-point lead and 327 to play now. Well, what a comeback win this would be for the Irish. They were down by 15 in the second half. Andy Woods, no throw levers, working against Tower. And got it right back to Jack Hurd. The shot no, and the tip good. That might have been Levers that got the tip. No, it's Jack Hurd on the tip, and he got his 20th point of the ball game as they quit at the bucket to Hurd. 74-72 Irish, 258 left in the game. Damon Sweet to the top of the circle. Takes the jump shot. Good. Damon Sweet racks up his 19th point of the night. And the Irish lead is four. There you see the clock. And Speedy Morris wants a timeout. LaSalle wants to talk it over. Speedy Morris called this timeout. There you see the clock. 2.42 to play. Notre Dame up by four in Philadelphia. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. Notre Dame began 150 years ago, and its people still talk about the same things. Inquiry, belief, and community. One of the things that I think is really interesting is that so many people of other faith traditions feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. A lot come here because they want to experience a religious atmosphere. And when you're amongst students who really want to talk about their faith, and they really challenge each other. Mm -hmm. Even if it's from midnight to 2 a.m., they'll still argue it out. And they do choose courses. Get ready to launch yourself into the world of air and space Smithsonian, a world that captivates the imagination. Satellites, super jets, soaring, something different every other month. There's no other magazine like Air and Space, and with your subscription comes membership in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. To order Air and Space, call 800-841-0300 and receive a full year. Six issues for just $18 with membership in the National Air and Space Museum. 800-841-0300. Second half, Elmer Bennett has had for Notre Dame. Oh, God. 20, 20 points, huh? 22? 20 in the second half. 20 in the second half. 8 of 11 shooting. That's the one where, as I said, the only man with the ball that can hurt you is the guy that happens to have it. He had it. <clears throat> you know, you talk about the one for eight first half, Jim. There's an old adage that I've always loved in, in basketball about a shooter. If you're a shooter, Shoot if you're hot, and if you're not hot, shoot till you get hot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's going to happen sooner or later. And that's exactly right, because I'm convinced, Fred, that most coaches feel if you're going to stop shooting, you might as well set. You can't get hot enough. Exactly. Not Absolutely. Yeah. So there's Bennett, who has gotten yeah. hot in the second half. 20 points. Rebound margin now. Notre Dame out rebounding LaSalle, 41-23. They've had 15 offensive boards, have the Irish. And a four-point lead, 235 to play. Bron Holland, backdoor cut to Randy Wood. And he missed the deuce, and Tower has the rebound. And he's fouled by Randy Wood. Oh, he missed the easy two. The exact same play that they set up in the first half that we showed as a first-half replay, where Holland comes out high, 
They were going to try to think that Woods is going to take the three-pointer. He backdoored Sweet again. Sweet completely lost him, and he was wide open on the layup. What's the coach to do? Oh, boy. Those are the kind that really kill you, you know? That's as close as you can get and as good a play as you can get at that point in the basketball game. Free throw good. Keen Tower, he's two for three on the line, has ten points in this contest, and the Irish up by five, matching their biggest lead of the night. Obviously, he hits this one, Fred. That's a four-point turnaround at this stage with 2.30 on the clock. Big night, Keith Tower. Big turnaround it is. Four-point swing. And the Irish with their biggest lead of the game at 78-72. 2.27 to play. Ball in the hands of Randy Woods. The offensive machine for LaSalle. After Lionel Simmons, Randy Woods took it over. One four setup. They're going to let him play one on one out of the one floor. Oh, Great block. block. Damon Sweet with a block. LaSalle gets it back, but they're in trouble, and the Irish have it. Billy Taylor pinned on the sideline, and do we have timeout? That's what he was trying to call. I Jody think Billy Taylor got the timeout. A big block from Damon Sweet, and then the Irish forced the turnover. And there's the Notre Dame bench. Boy, now is that pretty good judgment on the part of a freshman? You know, especially when you're standing right in front of the coach, and if you don't do what he wants, you know you're in trouble. Let's go back and pick up the big play by Damon Sweet on the block. Watch. They're in a 1-4 setup right now. Now watch. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. He did reach in with the wrong hand there. He reached in with the right, which can cause body contact. But he has such great leaping ability, Fred, that he just got it up there and was able to time it. Because, you know, they list... Randy Woods is six feet in the uh, in the basketball guide, but I don't think you're convinced uh, of that, are you? Not quite. Not quite that tall. One timeout left for each team. Let's do some housekeeping for you. One timeout left each team. Possession arrow belongs to LaSalle. 205 left in the game. Notre Dame up six. Both teams in a one and one. And in fact, Notre Dame has committed ten fouls and LaSalle eight. Yeah. That's, so LaSalle will shoot two from here. That's on. what I was asking you earlier if Notre Dame had had the ten fouls because Anyone now is going to put LaSalle on that line for two shots, and as I said earlier, they're a 74% free throw shooting team. Notre Dame coming back from a 15-point deficit to take the lead here. LaSalle, look at that when they've scored 70-plus points. Look at that record, 107 and 18. Well, they've scored 72 in this one, and the Irish have them down by a half dozen. And Notre Dame was down by 15 early in the second half. It was 48-33. The Irish have outscored them since then. 45 to 24. And Notre Dame basketball with 2.05 to play. That was like a run some clock. Yeah. Get a bucket here. Elmer Bennett met at midcourt by Randy Woods. And Bennett's got a drive, and Woods foul. No. There's a foul call. They don't kind of not going to count the basket. No, nope. out on but the floor. Fourth foul on Randy Woods. He fouled him before he got to the bucket. So the foul on Randy Woods is scored with the ninth on LaSalle. That's a pretty good matchup right here. Elmer Bennett can play very good one-on-one -on -one basketball. And you see, Randy Woods got screened just a little bit by his old man right there. Elmer Bennett's free throw, fall over the rim, and then falls. His 23rd point of the night, his 21st of the second half, seven-point lead, Notre Dame. Free throws for the Irish. 80-72 Notre Dame now. A minute 54 to play. New power. No goal levers. Boy, Jack Hurd has really been quiet this half, Fred. Oh, did Levers rock? No, he kept the pivot foot on the floor. Now throws to Jack Hurd. Hurd dumps it off to Bron Holland. Box and the fifth foul is going to go. Make it the fourth foul on Keith Tower. Now the Irish have three players with four fouls and a minute 36 to play. Nice pass by Jack Hurd. He only has four points in this half. Only four points in this half. Watch. Boy, he saw the double team right there, and he got it right into Holland's hands. And Holland did just what he should have done with his body strength and his weight. Slam that thing up on that glass, hoping to get a chance for a three-point opportunity. You see John Ross check in, and Keith Tower sit down with a minute 36 to play. 
And now in the ball game, Paul Burke for LaSalle has replaced Neubauer at the point. They put a freshman in. Ron Holland at the free throw line. Four for five on the line tonight for the Explorers. 80-72 Notre Dame. A minute 36 to play. And a break for the Irish. Wooten trying to check back in from the south. He'll replace Ron Holland if he makes the free throw. And he does. And he does. Here's Blitz Wooten checking in. The 6'7 freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, a medical red shirt last year. And Ron Holland out of the game and not real happy. He's going to give them a little better defensive pressure, I think, right here. Even though he is a freshman, probably has better leaping ability also. Half court pressure now from LaSalle. The Irish beat it with a minute 26 left on the clock. 80 73, Notre Dame. 31 on the shot clock. And Notre Dame not in a hurry right now. Yep. Burn it. Get the ball in the hands of your good free throw shooters. And he Woods has four fouls. That's a very one. good matchup. Very good with the four fouls, Fred. 18 seconds left on the shot clock. We'll see if they let Bennett take him. He does down the lane and now tries to dish it and throws it away. Picked off by Burke for LaSalle. Knocked down by Damon Sweet. Ellis tried to save it. Throws it off the leg of a LaSalle oh, player. It's yeah. Irish basketball. What 59 seconds to play. Boy, that is great athletic ability, right? He was just about to go out of bounds, felt the pressure behind him, and slapped it right off the LaSalle player's knee. Irish advantage. Now they get a new shot clock and only 54 seconds left in the game. Damon Sweet, Lafonso Ellis, John Ross, hammered. And the Irish go to the line with only 49 seconds left in the game and a seven-point lead. The foul on Blitz Wooten, his third. That's exactly what John Ross should have done. I thought for a second he was going to bring that thing back out. Let's take a look at the save. This is really, I thought Sweet was going to get to this ball. Watch Sweet, I thought he was going to get to it before the Fonz got to it. Now watch Ellis, watch. He sees Milko right behind him, bounces it right off of his knee. And Ross missed the first free throw attempt. Still 49 seconds left in the game. Jones only had six attempts, four out of six coming into this game. Comes back, gets the second with an eight point lead to the Irish. That's just their biggest lead of the night. Only 47 seconds left to play. Oh boy, Lever set a pick on Damon Sweet. Randy Woods missed the drive. The tip good by Paul Burke. And now a whistle blowing. And a timeout called by LaSalle. That's their last timeout. And it comes with 40.5 seconds to play. Notre Dame will have a six point lead in the ball when we come back. Let your true colors show with the 1991 Host Creative Sports Fall Catalog. No college sports fan should be without it. Just call 1-800-488-3883. The Host Creative Fall Catalog is your complete guide to programs, collectibles, videos, outerwear, and more. No matter what your school colors are, the Host Creative Fall Catalog will complete your college sports collection. To get a free catalog, just call 1-800-488-3883. Notre Dame began 150 years ago, and its people still talk about the same things, inquiry, belief, and community. Uh, many people have the idea of the university. The purpose is just the uh, acquisition and, and uh, transmission of knowledge. But from my point of view, especially at a university like Notre Dame, we're trying to inspire the students to incorporate that knowledge into a lively worldview, into a way of perceiving the world, a way of acting in the world. In trying to make it up. Two big free throws for Notre Dame. Just 37 seconds to play, and the Irish up by eight. After being down by 15 in the second half. John Ross with the rebound is fouled. And the walk to the other end with 32 seconds to play. How about being down by 15 in the second half? Boy. And coming back so, now to lead by eight with 32 yeah, seconds. Absolutely to amazing play. what they have done. Nice often one. and defensively, right, Fred? And defensively. You know, I'll tell you what I bet's going to happen. With John McLeod at Notre Dame, the day will come when, just as in football, this school will win this game simply because it says Notre Dame on the front of their shirt. Uh, but this man is the coach. Well, he's convinced that he's going to be able to do that. He knows it's going to be a painful process, and he keeps saying that, but if they give him time, as you said, he's going to get it done. When you reach that stage where the name on your shirt makes you believe you're a winner, you're over the hump, aren't you? Yep, you are. 
And I guess I've been there 36 years, so I've seen it happen for, <laughs> yes. for a few years. You know what? The other team can read that name on the front of your shirt, too. <laughs> Just 29 seconds to play, and that name is going to mean winner here in Philadelphia tonight. A 10-point lead to the Irish, biggest lead of the night. Not much for South can do about it now. Burton has a block by Ellis. Picked up inside by Hurd. The shot won't go. Let him go. Milko Reavers got it down, but it took him too long. And now just 13 seconds left in the game. Irish play it in with an eight-point lead and a foul over in the corner. And that's going to be Randy Woods' fifth. And he is headed straight to the bench. Randy Woods will finish the night with 25 points. And getting an ovation even from the Notre Dame bench. Yeah. Maybe for leaving. <laughs> it, it almost sounds cruel to say that he, he didn't get a season to average when he's at 28. But boy, that's a whale of a game. We've got some tough shots down tonight. Billy Taylor walked to the line, just hit two big free throws. Has 10 points tonight, 9.3 seconds to play. I may never get used to putting the tenths on the seconds. So the Irish are going to walk away from here with their second straight world road win. And don't overlook the importance of this win here tonight. Lafonso Ellis comes out of the ball game. Boy, what a big night he had. 17 points, 15 rebounds for Lafonso Ellis tonight. Now into the ball game, Brooks Boyer for Notre Dame. Out comes Damon Sweet. Damon Sweet finishes the night with 19 points. Elmer Bennett with a huge second half for the Irish here tonight. 24 points in the game, 22 in the second half. And Billy Taylor at the line. 12 points tonight for Billy Taylor. Irish by 10, seven seconds to play. Burke pulls and shoots and misses. And the rebound tipped around, and that's going to be the end of the ball game as Blitz Wooten will get the two points. They're going to count the basket. And it's not going to matter. Blitz Wooten, sixth point of the night, makes the final. Notre Dame 87, LaSalle 79. The Irish come from 15 back in the second half to win it by eight at the Civic Center. And we'll be back with more post-game activities. The win to the Irish here in Philadelphia. Let your true colors show with the 1991 Host Creative Sports Fall Catalog. No college sports fan should be without it. Just call 1-800-488-3883. The Host Creative Fall Catalog is your complete guide to programs, collectibles, videos, outerwear, and more. No matter what your school colors are, the Host Creative Fall Catalog will complete your college sports collection. To get a free catalog, just call 1-800-488-3883. Notre Dame began 150 years ago, and its people still talk about the same things, inquiry, belief, and community. Many people have the idea of the university, the purpose is just the uh, acquisition and, and uh, transmission of knowledge. But from my point of view, especially at a university like Notre Dame, we're trying to inspire the students to incorporate that knowledge into a lively worldview, into a way of perceiving the world, a way of acting in the world. What a wonderful win for Notre Dame down 15 in the second half. Came back to win by eight on the road here against LaSalle in Philadelphia tonight. Jim Gibbons, nice win. Well, I'd say when you're 15 down and you can turn it around like that, and as I said before, no comparison kind of between the way they played offensively and defensively the first half and they did the second. The interesting thing is that LaSalle outscored Notre Dame 14 to three in the first uh, the last three or four minutes of the first half. Notre Dame outscored LaSalle 13 to seven over the last three minutes, and they had balanced scoring from five players tonight, which really added to it. Now onto Madison Square Garden to play North Carolina oh. Saturday night. You said at the start of the game that maybe they're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You have to hope that light is not the Carolina <laughs> Express coming through Madison Square Garden. Welcome to Mac Conference Basketball.